Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Pod Strickland. I'm your host, Shwini Poo, in this episode 419. One episode away from the most important episode we've ever put out. Uh, I am joined, uh, not as always by anybody that is usually on this pod, but I am joined by two guests who have been on this pod before. One is Zach, that is at underscore Zach the Ladder on Twitter. Zach, how are you doing? Doing great. I am enjoying my post college life where I have all this free time to do pods with my best friends and my and my favorite haters in my life here. So well, not for long, hopefully. Yeah, maybe hopefully not for long. We'll maybe see. some big news coming. We'll let's we'll see. We'll see. That. Yeah. Uh, but we're also joined by Will. That is at Will underscore Nets underscore hater. Will, how are you doing? Yeah, you know, I, sadly, the the Will Celtics fan jinx was was a, was a swing and a miss. You know, for it, it was a, it was a it was a three month long agenda. I, I had I had the best of intentions, but but it failed. So did you did, the character that is Will Celtics fan was happy? Did you was, realize that that was going to fail like the moment that everybody in the Eastern Conference died? I think it was after like a quarter of the finals. Like I think going to the finals, <laughs> I kind of like like I think I picked the Celtics, but like I kind of deluded myself into thinking beforehand. Like oh, I don't know, like. You know, Dallas is going on this pretty crazy run. And then after a quarter, I was like, oh, this is, this is over. Yeah, this plus is Kyrie's, I mean, Kyrie's got a bag. So, you know, you got to consider that. Uh, all right. Only skilled player ever. <laughs> only, only skill that matters is mid-range pull-ups and other aspects of basketball matter. <laughs> all right. Well, we might talk about that. I don't know. Zach, Zach is the one that cooked up the topics for this episode, and we do not know what they are. But before we do any of that, do have to make a few announcements first. We've been Strickland has an Instagram. Check that out. That is at Strickland on Instagram. We're posting all kinds of new content on there. The Strickland also has a YouTube channel where you may be watching this podcast. If you are not done so already, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. That'd be a huge help to us. Strickland also has merchandise, which you can find on our website at www.strick.land. There's a link that'll take you to the merchandise store, and you can find all kinds of cool stuff on there t shirts, sweatshirts, hats, coffee mugs, water bottles, you name it. We've got it. Strickland. Also has a Patreon, which you can subscribe to. There are a number of different tiers. There's a $6 tier that gets you access to Pod Strickland, the podcast that I host every Friday with Prez. You also get access to takes from Obvious Bozos that is hosted by Andrew Steele, a.k.a. Dog, along with our very own Zach Ladder, who is here with us today. You also get access to the Strickland Discord with the conversation never stops. There are further tiers. There's a $9 here that gets you access to Strick and Roll, my solo pod, where I ran and about the next year more. You also get access to wonderful premium articles by Matthew Murdo, one of the best in the business. And you get access to Strictly NFL, which, you guessed it, is our podcast that is about the NFL that is hosted by Constantine Metricos. There are further tiers. There's a $15 tier, $30 tier, $50 tier, and $100 tier. This comes with a variety of additional benefits, including like listening on our pod recordings, merchandise discounts, and even potentially co the podcast alongside yours truly one day, whether you choose to subscribe or not. And that's, none of this would be possible without you. And none of this would be possible without Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season, from baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our, one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. The game starts here. Uh, speaking of bet online, I just want to mention this before I even we talk about basketball. I got the most insane fucking message yesterday from my friend. This is all he said. Apostolos Christou plus 400 to win the 100 meter backstroke. That was it. I didn't respond. I was just like, I have no, like, why are you, are you crunching backstroke tape? Like, are you, <laughs> is that, is that the thing? These are, these are six individuals. My, uh, I, have, I have two, two close friends who are ha- hardcore gamblers and they they bet on the summer league team like money line going in because during mlb all-star break i think so like that was literally the only thing they could bet on (laughs) they were like and like they're not like they're casual nba fans they're like this fucking whitehead guy is the worst player ever why is he on the fucking court (laughs) like like, guys it's this is basically summer camp for nba players (laughs) the fact that you're gambling on this is a a new problem (laughs) oh man all right zach the floor is yours if you want to introduce your your uh spin drift ultra uh six pack of takes 
Okay, well, well, Schwinn is already spoiling what we have here, but today I, I have brought Will and Schwinn a, a six pack. You know, we brought over a six pack just like our, our 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 good friend Uncle Bill Simmons usually does a little six pack with a sponsor that I will not repeat because they don't pay us. <laughs> but uh, we do have a spot. You know what? Maybe it's the Bet Online six pack for for today. Bet you know, uh, yeah, Bet Online six pack or uh, Strickland Patreon six pack. That's what, that's what it is. Those are our sponsors. But I got six topics. Six of them. Um, all of them are NBA adjacent, NBA related. Some of them are more basketball related than others. Some of them are more basketball conversation sphere related. But anyway, without further ado, the first one, the most burning one, the hottest topic in town right now, the new NBA media rights deal that was made a- official yesterday with a press release from NBC Sports, press releases from the NBA. Um, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't been following the negotiations what basically happened was that the nba has come to deals with nbc disney which is espn and amazon the newest the newest entry into this space and uh, tnt our old friends at tnt warner bros discovery have been left out in the cold they tried to match the amazon offer they claimed that they matched the amazon offer uh perfectly but the nba decided to choose the amazon offer and move forward with amazon and i believe that amazon uh, i believe that wbd and the nba will be going to court to settle this dispute but the reason i bring this up is because i'm going to come out and say it i hated tnt i hated nba broadcast on tnt i was so so excited to hear that we're not moving forward with them and this will be the last season of them i can't stand listening to chuck i can't stand shaq i can't stand kenny Ernie is Ernie's great. Ernie's fine. Ernie's fine. Ernie has a hard job. Ernie's got a hard job steering the wheel for those guys. But these guys have given the Knicks terrible coverage, given the Knicks terrible coverage. As long as I've been watching them, they seem uninterested in growing the product. They seem uninterested in praising the stars of the NBA. They seem more interested in complaining and comparing what it was when they were in the league. And it is overall like a, a, yeah, sure. There are a lot of funny moments. Fine. Funny moments are great, but like it is not a conducive product to growing the game and creating new fans and helping that stuff. So I was very, very happy to see that TNT is not no longer in the picture following this season. The thing I really want to talk about though is Bleacher Report. And uh, people, you may, you may know Bleacher Report as the number one sports media outlet these days. They are an inspiration for my career as a social media and as a sports social media person. I have long been inspired by a lot of Bleacher Report's content. And I was, uh, if you didn't know, Bleacher Report is owned and operated by TNT Sports, which is owned and operated by WVD, which is a kind of a circular relationship with all this stuff. That's why they tend to put more highlights out when the games are on TNT rather than when the games are on ESPN or something like that. And the biggest thing I noticed is that when the news broke that the NBA was kind of going with the Amazon deal and they were going to leave TNT out in the cold, Bleacher Report quietly launched a social media campaign called Keep the NBA on TNT. And we're <laughs> we're posting like long ass Instagram carousels, tweets. They even put up a, a, a big headline on their site, like top 10 NBA on TNT moments in this like marketing campaign to save TNT as if it's in the fans control. It, it's not like the fans are not picking who this is. And I just thought it was really weird to, to see like the number one like social media company. And like, I, okay, I know this because I'm like so in the weeds of the social media scene, but I'm sure a lot of people like don't know that Bleacher Report is owned by WBD or is owned by TNT and has a relationship with them. And it felt very, very weird to see one of the, the news media partners clearly just picking a side here and being like, fuck Amazon. We want to be, we want to keep the NBA on here. And they just put out all this media propaganda, all these instagram posts all these tweets all these articles all this digital content about keeping the nba on tnt highlighting all these funny moments and i don't know that just kind of struck me the wrong way i thought this was a little bit weird in the middle of the offseason we have this massive campaign from bleach report about keeping the nba on tnt and i thought about it a little more i'm like why would the nba want to stay on tnt what made them pick amazon why wh- what's the deal here and i think the weirdest thing was in the press release that TNT put out, or one of the press releases that TNT, they, they put out a whole series of press releases in the past few weeks. But one of them was, they talked about like the history of NBA on TNT, the legacy of NBA on TNT and all the great moments that they've created. And apparently like because of the legacy, they feel entitled that the NBA should stay there because they need to carry on this this tradition, this this great thing that we had going, which I didn't think was, was so great. But anyway, Amazon has a much further reach than, than TNT. 
And I'm going to bring NBC into the picture here in a little bit too. But if you want to just isolate TNT and Amazon, because that was the two, they were the two competitors for like this third package that we kind of have going on here. How many people have Amazon now? How many people have Amazon Prime? And not just Americans. I, I don't have the number. I, sh I should have done, I should have done some more research, but I can promise you that more people have Amazon Prime than people have HBO Max, or it's actually just called Max now. And Amazon, that would have been the package. They would have kept games on linear cable on TNT and then the adjacent streaming package, which is Max. I don't know if you guys have, have used Max. It's, it's not my favorite streaming platform. I, I don't think the infrastructure and the uh, technology behind it is, is that good. It's awful. It's pretty awful. Yeah, it's the platform just, just sucks, more, first of all. It's also like 50, expensive. Yeah, go ahead. More than 50% of the U.S. population has Amazon. Yes, yeah, so, so more, more than 50%. 170 yeah. million so, at 330. I also just think like the uh, Amazon Prime like word, the name, just kind of rings a bell a little bit more than like Max or, uh, or TNT, anything like that. I also just think, you know, on TNT, what else is on TNT? I'll tell you. We've got All Elite Wrestling. Good product. Not a great product, but it's a good product. That is actually, I don't have the numbers of this, but I'm pretty sure that is the second biggest TNT entity besides the NBA. Like, that is what people are tuning in for. Besides NBA and All Elite Wrestling, it's like recorded TV shows, movie reruns, and like crap that nobody is watching in the modern era because streaming exists and you can just watch whatever you want at any moment you want uh for pretty much for free or cheap so cable tv you know it's we're actually one of the spoiler one of the other topics is going to be a cable tv thing so i'm not going to get into this right away but anyway kind of just makes a lot of more sense to put it on amazon i thought the nfl on amazon was a great product last year i thought they did a great job in that booth i thought it was really easy to access because i have amazon prime and it was great They've also gotten just, a lot better with it. Yeah, like it, they've gotten a lot better. First started, I was like, "What are they doing?" And then now, I actually like. I don't. I don't normally watch any post game shit ever. Yeah, and I actually watch theirs. Yeah. So the other reason I want. So I'm going to bring in NBC to this picture, by the way, too. So bringing the NBA onto NBC. I know like NBC and TNT weren't really competing with each other because there there may have been a scenario where you would have NBC and TNT in the same picture, but didn't seem too likely. But I do want to just say, the NBA on NBC is so, so great for the league. It's so, so great for the league to have them on the same platform as the NFL. Because right now there are so many people, I don't know, you listened to Rosillo brought this up a few weeks ago, but like there are people in America who are still in this camp of like, oh, you watch that NBA shit? How, how are you still watching the NBA? Like in January, how, how are you watching like Hornets Wizards on a January Thursday night? Like, oh, you, I can't believe you watch that crap, you know? Now... We're really going to have Sunday night basketball following Sunday night football in that same slot on channel four, a massive linear, linear cable network, way bigger than TNT, way more known and way more prominent than TNT. And I didn't, I also just, I know for a fact that their presentation level, their visual presentation, their commentary, their video execution, their camera, photography, their other stuff is, is going to be better than TNT. It's going to be, they have better resources. They have more money to spend. They have more stuff to play with. It's going to be a better presentation. But putting the NBA in the same slot as the NFL, the NFL is the greatest live television product in America right now. There are no, Nobody watches anything else more than the NFL. It is the premier live sport property right now, and NBC, and NBC has that. And just inserting the NBA onto the same channel in the same time slot as the NFL is such a great PR marketing move to, to kind of boost the, to boost the brand value of the NBA and put it in that same conversation with the NFL. And put it on that same presentation level on like whether it's called basketball night in America or something night basketball. I don't think we have the official name for it yet, but it is going to make the NBA feel so much more important. And if they nail the scheduling and if they give us like good matchups every Sunday night and like in a blockbuster exclusive spot, we are in for a fucking treat. And I, I am so yeah. so excited for this for this version of the NBA and getting it like think about this. The NBA was in the same conversation as all elite wrestling on TNT. And is now entering the same conversation as the NFL in a, in one year. So that is just a no-brainer, huge dub for the NBA. And then ESPN also in the picture. ESPN is great. You know, Mike Breen, I don't really need to talk about how good ESPN is. That's kind of, it is what it is with ESPN. I don't, you can say what you want about Stephen A and those guys and their pregame show, but it's here to stay and it's fine. But uh, my, my bottom line takeaway from this, screw TNT. NBC is great. Really looking forward to it. Huge dub for the NBA overall. Great media rights deal. I'm looking forward to 2025, 2026. I am not looking forward to this final season of TNT because I think Bleacher Report is going to be really fucking annoying. And I think Chuck is going to be really fucking annoying. I think all these guys are like going to make this exit as dramatic and chaotic as it can be. 
And uh, it might not be, it might not be a pretty exit, but it will be an exit. And uh, that's it. I'm curious for your thoughts. Oh, wow. This is actually literally just, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, an NBA red zone type show is coming to ESPN as part of the new media rights deal. Did not hear that. Wow. Yeah. They tried some stuff. Like I know there's something on like the NBA app right now. It's actually not terrible. Like if you're like a hardcore, like pop, like if you're the kind of person listening to this podcast, <laughs> this NBA NBA podcast a lot, you will enjoy it. It's actually pretty good. It's on the NBA app. It's free, and they just like whip around to whatever games late and close. Like they don't have a got the red side. They don't have Scott, Scott, Scott Hanson. Yeah, yeah, like they Scott don't Hanson. have their guy yet. Like they, it's like a rotate. Like uh, who's just like because that guy. I, I'm not even sure that that's a real person i think that was a robot they built to do <laughs> nfl red zone that's uh, actually the tryouts for that just involve who can do the most cocaine that's that's how you get that job yeah like i I've, i saw him on like one interview and i'm like oh he's just an, an insane man like he just, <laughs> he just, he just does not, doesn't have an off switch at all. yeah he was on with like rich eisen this week i think but he, but yeah i think i think tnt is a little bit in their uh in their denver nuggets uh yeah, four house era. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's another thing I should like, meant. They're they're in debt. WBD is in yeah, debt. Like they do they're, not they're just, have money. Well, they presented well, well, the a credit offer. Cheap. Yeah. Yeah. The Nuggets are just cheap. Like the Cronkies like do have money, but yeah. you know th- this bullshit of like they're doing the exact same thing the Nuggets did when they like they were like you know we we our offer was right there. You know, we we did our best. You know <laughs> it's not our fault, and it's it's just that the other people have more money than them or offering more money than them. Yeah, and, I, uh, I don't think I, there's like a there's like not. I don't think the NBA believes they can because I what I from what I read I didn't I I didn't get into the the weeds on this but from what I read they structured this in a way where Amazon is almost like paying this as a lump sum or a big lump sum right up front. Yeah, they're paying the first three the first three years are being paid up front. Right, so like that's like I think it's like five point four billion dollars. Yeah, there's literally no chance that TNT or whatever whatever like they there's no chance they have that type of cash. They don't, and so so like when TNT is saying. We we will match this deal. It's bullshit. Like no, you're not. Like you literally can't. And, and, and I mean, I saw like they had somebody come in and say they would guarantee the funds. It's like, yeah, who the fuck is giving you just five point? Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll give you five point four billion dollars cash to fucking pay the end. Like that's just not happening. I don't think it's realistic. Um, and if and if it was, they're they're gonna be paying you know fucking they're gonna be paying interest on that, which is bananas. Like it's just a bad business decision to even try to to match that offer. Um, but I, I agree. I think that this is them saving face. Um, and honestly, I don't think Zaslav has any interest in, I don't, he basically said it, right. He said that we don't need the NBA, um, which cool. Good luck to you guys. I don't really know what TNT does now aside from yeah. the NBA. AW, AW, right. that's it. I, and I have lit- I have not put on anything besides an NBA game on TNT, maybe in my life. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't do wrestling. I don't, <laughs> so, I think so maybe like, I watched Godzilla on it. Well, yeah, you guys are like way younger than me, but like when I was growing up, like TNT was the kind of like, oh, it's Saturday afternoon and there's nothing on. Let me throw on TNT because they're probably showing some, they're probably showing like the Terminator, like Terminator 2 rerun that I haven't watched in like, you know, ever because I'm eight. And uh, that was like, it was like the channel that had the cool rerun movies that you would get on TV but that doesn't you don't need that shit anymore because we all have <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Netflix and Amazon and all this know, shit. Right. It's just it's it's crazy. So I, I don't know what they're gonna do, but I, I think Z- Zaslav is terrible. I, everything that's happened with Max is a joke. Uh his creative kind of push, and I use that term very lately, with HBO has been fucking garbage. Um, like HBO's content over the last whatever four or five years compared to you know like peak hbo stuff is it's, it's terrible so um shout out to him he's doing a great job doing really good work and it's really Go just any, Chuck yeah. with like with like the inside the nba like yeah ernie and Shaq don't really matter like like i, I like I, i'm i'm actually like pretty pro inside the nba like definitely compared to you guys like yeah. i don't watch it like every time but like I'm just like it's not that serious, you know. Like I just don't think it's for people like us, you yeah, know. Like it's I, I see not. so often, like people like like they do that game who he play for, and they just like laugh at Charles, and yeah. like everyone gets everyone's like people get so annoyed, like oh my gosh, like 
They don't know that Blake Wesley has a 61 true shooting since the all-star break. Like, <laughs> yeah. Go listen to fucking thinking basketball. Like if that's what you like, that's not what normal people want to hear. Only losers like us want to hear about that shit. Like, <laughs> like, no, but, that, I, see, I, I don't, I actually don't, I don't hate inside the NBA or anything like that, but like my issue with them has just been like, you. they went from like, it's like a funny level of irreverence and, you know, your uncle who you can't bring out in public type of like way to discuss the NBA to the point. But like now it's just, they're just constantly hating. Like they, they yeah. literally just hate on the, on the league in general. And I'm like, I'm like, are we like, can we stop doing the, the thing where we pretend that like teams can't win championships shooting jumpers or that like the yeah. big man has to get on the block and like, can we like, can we just stop that? Like, can we just no. really, <laughs> they hate on teams that do it like i remember when the bucks won the title i forgot if it was chuck Shack. i think it was chuck was like they are the dumbest championship team i've ever seen in my life like, like dude, immediately right. after they won the championship <laughs> <laughs> it's like really like you can't just be like wow they... it just give them a, it, a it's day it's the only thing that it's like what do they do two shows a week like that, that's definitely yeah. enough for even somebody who considers myself a a, a relative fan like because it's kind of like a, a casual version of Tim Bontemps where everyone's like, oh, he fucking hates my team. They hate all 30 teams, you know? Like, it's like, they hate on all 30 teams equally. So it's, it's, not, it's not personal. Um, big him Bontemps fan over here, by the way. Just Love shout out, shout out to him, him Bontemps. He's, he's, yeah. he's the goodwill hunting of NBA podcasts. He, he just yeah. has such a better understanding of the NBA than all the peers. It physically pains him. He did get it's just he did get owned this week by Ben did McMahon. He? Yeah, Ben McMahon owned him. Oh, he I, was I like, to the pod this He week. was talking about like, what if Ev- Evan Mobley needs to be like their best offensive yeah. player or something? And they made a really that, awkward cum joke. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> they did. They did that. But then McMahon was like, "Yeah, and we would be like the best podcast in the NBA if you were smart and in- like if you were intelligent and handsome." But <laughs> we're not going to get that, are we? I was like, "Damn." What after him? I really, I really think Bob Tebbs genuinely hates his co-hosts. And he, it, he definitely, I, I, I love their, I love their vibe. He he goes fucking crazy when Windhorse talks over him. It's so funny. I I, I, I get I get the it's <laughs> like Wendy just is gives so few fucks about talking about somebody who doesn't like basketball. Like I oh, I yeah. love Wendy. He doesn't give a like. <laughs> he I remember on the low post during the NBA finals. He was like, "Yeah, I kind of dozed off in the third quarter." If I'm being honest, like, <laughs> yeah, you're at the fucking finals game. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and he's constantly complaining about like how hard it is. Like, oh, we have to fly to Los Angeles to watch the Lakers. Oh I god, this, this airport. Miami. I have to fly to uh, Miami and watch the Heat. I hate the Celtics because they lose games and make series longer. Uh, <laughs> my, my my favorite thing is that he gets so like. Oh, the aggregator's gonna get this uh, one. And like I'm like, dude, enough with the aggregators. All right, Zach. Okay. Let's the next this. one. This one is uh out of the TNC, uh, out of the TV lane, but we will be coming back to the TV lane. So don't don't forget about it all. This one, we're in the Patreon portion, right? Uh, I, I think this is gonna be the free episode, so keep going. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to keep it clean then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um Marlo. all right. So the Knicks made a decision lately that I was uh, confused by and disappointed by. And now that Will is here, I'm also going to bring in the Nets to this to this conversation because the Nets made the opposite decision. So draft draft happens in June. The Knicks, for anybody who uh, doesn't know, the oh, Knicks have not made... Is this made... a social media thing? It is a social media thing. So oh, if you want to tune yeah. out, if you want to skip ahead... Yeah, this is this that. is me on my wind yeah. horse right now. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so here's what happened. Here's what happened. The Knicks have not selected a rookie in two years. Trevor Keels does not exist. The Knicks have not picked a player in two drafts. Knicks fans fiending for a rookie. Fiending just to have a rookie, just to have somebody to overhype, somebody to 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 push agendas for, you know, some young player that we could stand for the next four years. Knicks fans, we were craving one. And we got one. We got actually, we got four. We got one who's 18. The other three are, you know, a little bit older. We got Pac Home, Tyler. Ariel Hoporty, Kevin McCuller, who might not be real. We're not sure about Kevin McCuller. But um, anyway, draft happens. 
great draft. The Knicks actually did a pretty good job of digital content at the draft. I liked the uh, couple good videos they put up, a couple good photos. It was all wow. nice, great, great draft. Wow, they got the then, ladder stamp. Yep, and then here's what happens. So Knicks fans like me are looking for all the content about these rookies. I want to know, I want to know what their favorite food is. I want to know what they wore, why they wore it. I want to know where they're from. I want to know who their family is. I want to know. I want to know about Paco and Dadie. I want to know his background. I want to hear from him. And you know what? We got one day of content from Paco the day after the draft. They took him out to Times Square to a couple of like, interviews of him in Times Square. It was cool. We got a couple good videos. He did a video where he was like, yo, what up, Nick fans? You know, like we get cl- classic, classic, classic uh, NBA content. It was great. It was great. But after that, also, that was only for Paco. Second round of the draft was the next day. You know, it didn't happen to the day after. Second round of the draft happens. The Knicks take Kolek, Hukporty, McCuller. And from that day on, second, second round of the draft, to the day of the summer league, the first game of the summer league, which I believe was like 18 days after the draft, 15 days after the draft, something like that. Sure. Sounds there good. was not a single piece of content produced about any of our third or second round rookies. Not a single piece. We got one, we got our we got our drafted graphic you, that we selected the player, and that was it. Do you think the so, social media people's cat uh check still cashed? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they pay they get salaries. So so so, so you're upset that they don't have to do well, more. Let work. me let me let me let me finish. Let me finish. So what the Nets do, the Nets are great with their digital content, but they have to be because they can't sell tickets. So like they really, really need to win every single margin on digital content to get asses and seats. And that's just the nature of their team. Like they need to, they're still in the business of building out a fan base. They are pouring money into marketing, pouring money into digital content because they have to, they don't really have a choice. The Knicks are in the opposite field. The Knicks, the Knicks could delete their Instagram tomorrow and still sell out season tickets for the next like five seasons. Don't don't tell Mr. Windrum that. I'm just saying that they I don't know who that is, but they could. So that's Nets they, Daily. 70, oh, 79 okay. years young, Nets Daily. <laughs> oh, I, oh god. Not kidding. Anyway, Nets Daily. I'm sorry, I, I, I guess gotta say this. Wasn't he tweeting the other day about like how he saw fucking like it was a few, it was like during free agency or something where he's talking about like he saw, you know, fucking Wilt Chamberlain live and stuff, and he, people were like, wait. He, he took the SAT day after Wilt's 100 point game and said, yeah. like, 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 you guys remember taking the S, like, you know, you're in like some big gymnasium right before or some shit. And he said, like, that's all everyone was talking. And like, people looked it up and like, there was an SAT administered the day after in New York, like, like, like 99% Jerry is telling the truth. Like, that, the, yeah, he said he took the SAT the day after he Wilt's 100 point game. Okay. I, I, love, anyway. I love Bob. What a character. Yeah. That, uh, we, he's a great follow. Um, but anyway, the Knicks have a full staff of photographers and videographers who are really, really talented. I am inspired by them, big fan of them. And I follow all of them on their like personal socials because I'm a fucking sicko. And I want to know like all this content. I want, I want all the extra content I can get. And, you know, I was really excited because usually teams will, so at the NBA summer league, the NBA has their own photographers and their own videographers who shoot for the NBA and produce content for the NBA. And teams have the right to use that content on their own platforms. That's fine. It's like via NBA Entertainment. They don't even need to credit them. It's just the Knicks can can use that. But teams can also send their own photographers, their own videographers, their own content producers or, or personalities or anything like that to Vegas to shoot, you know, team forward, team specific, player specific content as well. And uh, I was saddened, disappointed to learn that the Knicks did not send anybody to Summer League. The Knicks sent their players and their coaches and nobody from the content team. And in those 12 days between the second round and the draft, the Knicks did not post a single photo of Tyler Kolek, a single video of Kolek. We did not even get to see Kolek in Knicks gear until the summer league game started, until the broadcast started. The broadcast opened. I think those games actually start pretty quickly. There's no like bullshit, like nine minutes of pregame. When yeah, I, I, missed, I, I missed the tip-off yeah. on the ones I was yep. trying to watch. It's so the like... Knicks game was like scheduled to start at like 3 o'clock, and I tuned in at like 2.55, and at 3.01, that was the first time I got to see Tyler Kolek wearing Knicks gear 13, 14, 15 days after he was drafted. And I even posted a tweet. I was like, he's real. This is what he looks like, because we haven't even fucking seen this guy since we drafted him. The Nets, however, send they send an army of content producers to Vegas. They sent so many photographers, videographers, they were shooting every practice. They were doing interviews. They were doing TikToks. They were doing all sorts of great content. Other guys, Jalen Wilson, Dariq Whitehead, who might suck, uh, all the other guys on their team. 
And, you know, I'm just, I was just curious. I'm not really surprised anymore because, like, the Knicks have done stuff like this in the past and made choices like this in the past. But I was just disappointed. I, I just, like, I know there are other fans like me who would have, who would have appreciated the content had we got some Kolak behind the scenes, had we got some Ariel Hukporty behind the scenes, some Dimitro Skapensev behind the scenes footage. You know, I, I would have loved it. Other fans would have loved it. But we didn't. The Knicks, uh, the Knicks used the NBA official content. They used the Getty images. They used whatever, and they called it a day. They barely even posted during the games. They would throw up like one highlight. For a couple of games, their halftime score graphic would go up like halfway through the third quarter. They'd be like, oh, halftime. And it's actually really, we're actually almost done with the third quarter if you're watching the game. So it was fucking hammered. Yeah, they basically just, I was disappointed that they mailed in the summer league coverage because this was the biggest summer league for Knicks fans since RJ, since RJ Barrett summer league. Like, is that, is it? The, the, the Kevin Knox Ignis Brasdakis duo was was a special group. No, that was that was that was that was twenty RJ and Brasdakis was twenty nineteen. Knox was twenty seven. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Year before. 2018? Year before. Year before. He's, he's the really good draft. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, great draft. Knicks uh, home run pick for the Knicks. That's you know, the Mitchell he, Robinson draft. That's how I yeah. remember it. Also the Damian Dotson draft, I believe. Right? No, Dotson was twenty. Oh, so he was the Frank one. He, he was twenty seventeen. Yeah. Sorry. But anyway, very important summer league, high volume content potential. Not capitalized on by the Knicks. Home run swing out of the park for the Nets. Nets content was great. They killed it. A lot of great videos. They covered their eventual summer league MVP perfectly. And uh, yeah, I just I wanted to I want to talk about that. But I know you guys don't care about social media content, so if you don't have too much to say, it's uh, it's okay. I I I enjoyed the Nets summer league players uh, when they were asking them what's old, and they said anything before two thousand. And I was like, yes. If it's great. the year it's you great. were born in starts with a one, get off the Brooklyn Nets. You know, I, I think no, I didn't. Count. That was Noah Clowney who said that, right? More than a, a bunch of them said it. And I was born in 2000, yeah. so it doesn't make me feel old. So it's okay. But they were yeah, like, yeah, if, if you're born before 2000, you're, you're, you're old. And I'm like, get anyone born before 2000 off the team. Yeah. That, that was All those clips, though, like Knicks fans are fiending for content. They're fiending for basketball. We haven't watched basketball since the playoffs. And when you have an opportunity like that, look. The next three months are going to be fucking quiet. The next three months, they're not going to have anything to shoot. They're not going to have anything to talk about. They're not going to have anything to post. So if you have two weeks in Vegas with these players, you might as well make content, bro. You might as well and shoot them. Like, you might as well do stuff. With these rookies, this is probably the last time we're going to see them. Yeah, this is play we're much not going to see these guys. Until next summer league. Like, yeah, the, the so like, we might as well get to know them. And like, Donnie is going to be around here. Like, they, they didn't draft him to like kick him to the curb. Like, they, they drafted honest. this guy. How do you say his first name? I knew his dad. It took, Pacom. It's pa- Pacom, Pacom Daddy. Pacom. It took me like four times of you saying Pacom to realize that was Daddy. Because I actually <laughs> kind of liked him pre-draft. But like, I was like, yeah, I don't no, know I, his I, first name. And, I, uh, yeah, I, I but, will pretend I liked him, but I heard good things. So there you go. That's all I needed to hear. Chuck was all over him. So, um, Yeah, look, I... It doesn't matter for the Knicks. Like, it just doesn't matter for them. They, they don't need it. Yeah. They don't... The added revenue potential is meaningless to them, uh, and they probably thought they could probably. They would, I guarantee you, there's some fucking bean counter over at MSG Corporate who would tell you that uh, there's actually a very, very good financial reason for them to not devote I'm much sure, money sure towards this stuff. Well, you know, and and I, I don't know. I just I, I just can't get upset about this because I I don't. <laughs> care like i do i care about the knicks being good and if the knicks are good Me too. they could take a fucking dump uh they could have they could record leon rose taking their shit and put that on twitter and i'd be like great awesome love well, this. yeah i was gonna say it's, it's such a deviation from from other parts of the knicks operation which are so welcoming to the media they they love talking to the yeah. media <laughs> always 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 speaking yeah. publicly yeah. The yeah. other thing is, like, I will say, like, the Knicks definitely have a strict, like, ever since Leon came over, they have a strict, like, no practice footage thing. Like, they will not let media into practice. They used to let media into practice prior to they, Leon they, Rose. They, they, this, is, this has been something that has been slowly, like, increasing yeah. for as long as Dolan's been there. Uh, this started back when he took over. You definitely don't remember this. He famously uh, had everybody in the team have to do uh, media training which both Sprewell and Camby walked out on and they were eventually traded, which is worth noting. Um, they have constantly sh- shut down access to players. Uh, if you watch any interview with players in the locker room, there's always that weird fucking 
white guy that's standing behind them, like hovering, making sure they're not saying anything that they don't want them to say. Um, this is it's just how they operate. Mark Berman's ghost, Schwinny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just his his presence is always felt, yeah. even if he's Mark in Bur Florida or whatever the fuck. Mark Berman with uh, with some really awesome retweets this week. Definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, he look it, it, they just, they don't care about this, and and I think they view it, and I actually think this is reasonable. I think they view whatever information they can keep in house, whatever it is. Yeah, I think they view that as a competitive advantage. I'm not I saying so this. I, I don't think this. I don't think the rookie stuff has anything to do with this. I just think they don't give a fuck. And and I and I don't think, like if Dolan cared, they would do it. So the reality to me is just simply that Dolan doesn't give a shit. And if Dolan, if your boss doesn't give a shit, then you're probably not going to give a shit about this thing that he doesn't give a shit about. Um, because like if you do all of a sudden devote a bunch of resources to it, he's probably going to be like, "Why the fuck are you spending money on this bullshit? I don't care that Pacom Dadier came from fucking France. Like I'm not, I don't even, I'm not going to remember this guy." For the next three years until he maybe gets minutes, which is never going to happen because he's probably going to get traded. Um, like, it just, it, he's not, he doesn't care. The only people he cares about on this team are fucking Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. And everybody else is just a fucking number uh, on the spreadsheet where he's like, we're paying this fucking OG guy $42 million? Yeah. <laughs> when did this happen? Like, he doesn't give a shit about this stuff, man. He, he and, and because of that, as, his, as somebody that works under him, you're not going to care because you don't want to, Again, like the, I mean, his fucking temper is notorious, and he's a guy who obviously has no fear of expressing his anger. And if if you again just do something that he doesn't care about, you're leaving yourself open to him noticing, and then him flipping his shit at you. Um, so I I would not I I just it is what it is to me. This is all about Dolan himself doesn't care, and if he doesn't care, then it is what it is for the Nets. Great job by them. I'm sure that they care much about this, um, and a lot of teams do. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we're 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 dancing around the real root here, which is Leon Rose does not want the average fan to realize that he is a white man. <laughs> very, very very obviously, the reason he never is in the media because he does he doesn't he doesn't want the public to know. <laughs> okay. That that was really funny when like it first leaked that they were hiring him, and I was, was quite like, surprised. Yeah, there were so many people that were like, wait, Leon Rose is fucking white? <laughs> He's a Jewish white guy from, like, Cherry Hill, New Jersey or whatever? <laughs> okay, last thing I'll, I'll leave you on, though. If the Knicks, like, don't want to shoot practice footage because that gives them, like, a, it gives them a competitive disadvantage by, like, putting out practice footage, fine. I believe that. That's That's probably true. Like, the Blazers, specifically... They actually put out like a gross amount of practice footage. Like they shoot like full practices and like put up like long amounts of real footage of guys going up and down in practice. And like, hey, I don't know if like other teams are fucking like hawking their Twitter account and watching like the Blazers practice. Who fucking knows? I, like, I have a feeling nobody's too interested yeah. in what Chauncey yeah. Billups has them doing. Yeah, the, the the fucking so, the Blazers players aren't interested in the Blazers practice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> anyway, DeAndre though, Ayton's like, I want to work from home. It doesn't mean like. <laughs> It doesn't mean like just practice footage. Like there are other ways to produce content that aren't like practice footage. There are other ways to produce content that like does not affect your competitive success whatsoever. And there are plenty of ways to do that. I can fucking write them out for you. I'll put them on Twitter or something, but we'll leave it at that. That's what happened. We've got some other things to talk about. I'm trying to think which direction. Are we going to talk play? about Howard Beck revealing that he loves Garden State this week on Twitter? We're not actually. That was not, <laughs> not on my agenda. It is not on my agenda. Um, it requires a no, well, you know what? You know what? This is a good segue because one of my things on this list was I wanted to check in on James Dolan. I wanted to check you in on Dolan. In? Uh, you know, he yeah, how, recently uh, doing? there's two things I wanted to bring up, Mr. Dolan. First one, is the, habits. first one is the sphere. Sphere, home run success. I don't know if they're making money, but it looks fucking cool. It looks really cool. The mm. events are awesome. The NHL draft, not an NHL fan. I don't even know any of these players. NHL draft was at the sphere. And it looked spectacular. It looked so good. It was the first time they've done like a real major sporting event, technically a sporting event in there. And I was like, you know what? I saw this and I was like, every draft should be here. This is a no brainer. This is such a success. It looks so cool. 
And I so don't what it's worth, they made $170.4 million in the last in the third quarter of 2020. Well, yeah, I mean, my you know, my, my deadhead father had nothing but glowing, glowing reviews. Yeah, I have a deadhead father as well. Before. My deadhead father has not been to that show, but he's in the deadhead internet community, and his uh, his deadhead com- com- compadres were uh, for yeah, rave I mean, reviews. They had they had U2 open, right? That was the first they did. Act. Yeah, it was so like U2, 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 U2. And, U2. And it's been the dead for like two months now and they're yeah. almost done and, and there's some other band i'm forgetting I believe yeah i mean it's a great venue yeah. you get to live in las vegas for yeah. fucking so it's not here's what i want here's, here's what i want me. i know will's not a wrestling fan but anybody who might not know this wrestlemania the biggest event in wrestling is coming to vegas this april this coming april and they're not gonna do wrestlemania at the at the sphere they can't do that it's gonna happen at the raiders stadium that's fine but that stadium is fucking amazing by the way stadium is fucking sick yeah. stadium is fucking sick but can we do the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony at the Sphere? Please, please. Hall of Fame ceremonies every year is the day before WrestleMania, by the way. And it's like a very, very great ceremony where they do these corn introductions for all these scripted characters. But it's it's great. It's a great thing. I would love to see that at the Sphere. I would really love to have an NBA draft at the Sphere. And it makes a lot of sense because you've got Summer League like right after also in Vegas. So if you want to like, maybe we just That's shrink today. the time between the draft and Summer League and you can just... Keep everybody in Vegas. Do a weekend in Vegas. We've got the Olympic thing going on. Like, doesn't uh, Team USA does their little camp over there too? You got summer league. You got the draft at the Sphere. I think there's an opportunity for that. Yeah. I think the NFL. The NFL is in Vegas already. I think the NFL could do the draft there. Um, so I just wanted to say, credit to Dolan for the Sphere. Good idea. Looks good. The other thing though with oh. Dolan. I mean, let's have thoughts on the Sphere before I get to the other the, the other Dolan piece. Any any Sphere thoughts? Uh, we... I would. I have no thoughts on. Him hosting the WWE uh, Hall of Fame introduction, but I think that it look it looks fucking awesome, and I don't know how much I forgot. I, I think it, they went over budget, like yeah, they spent like two and a half, two and a half. It million. ended up being like one point three yeah. billion over yeah. budget or something. Yeah. But all the reviews I've heard are awesome. Uh, it's also like gotten a lot of notoriety just as soon as it opened. Right, they had the eye. Yeah. thing and like people are like what is this thing and it's yeah. it just stands out and um look we'll see i mean uh, it was a big bet he made on it seems like it's working right now it's again um we'll see I, I don't know what that means but that's good for me and good for the knicks uh because hopefully he will just keep signing checks and stay the fuck away yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that's perfect, so perfect, yeah. perfect segue. Perfect segue because the other Dolan piece of this was that I wanted to give him some credit because the Knicks the past four, four, four years, almost pretty much four years, have built a contender and say that built a contender and Dolan has stayed out of the way. Dolan has not created any ruckus. He has not gone and criticized any celebrities. He has not released any press releases. He has not taken any chase bridge footage of spike lee using an entrance or anything like that okay that that was awesome that was awesome but anyway (laughs) dolan did he did do something lately he outlined (laughs) continued criticism of the nba's new revenue sharing policies that was great in in a message to the board of governors obtained by by espn he also keeps being the only owner to vote against things that yes like there's no reason to vote against huge dub huge dub huge dub (laughs) Huge dub. Love it. Love it. <laughs> when I saw this, when I saw this notification from Woj about like Dolan sending this letter, I was like, fuck, is this how it ends? Like, is this it? Is it, is this like, are we finally getting another Dolan thing where it's like, we're all fucked? Like, is this how, is this going to be it? And as I read the article, I'm like, you know what? Let him cook. Let him cook. He's cooking. He was He's actually kind of cooking. cooking. Yeah. It, exactly. In this yeah. article. He, yeah. I'm going to, I should, have some quotes. He should, I have the article pulled up. Should. Go ahead. If if it's so unfair to the big markets, then he should just sell the Knicks, go buy the Charlotte Hornets yep. for less money, profit the three billion like the four billion dollars, and then okay. just own the Hornets and take the three profits. <laughs> like, the, the, problem, it's really the problem is really still there. The the problem with selling the Knicks for him has always been that he can't just like nobody that buys the Knicks is gonna be like, I just want the Knicks. They'll be like, Well, I want the building too. And I want the Rangers, well, because they're part of the same fucking uh, business entity. So it just becomes this like super, like it's it's probably it would become the most expensive sports business purchase ever, pretty easily. Yeah. Just yeah. like I, I, it's I, I don't know because I mean Manchester United sold their valuation for a quarter of it ended up so the valuation for all of it ended up being something like. 
5.2 billion pounds. I think the Nets just got a valuation and would have put them at what six billion dollars when they sold a piece so. of the. Yeah, it's just like I have no idea what the Knicks would sell for, but it's it'll pro it would be because it's going to be the Knicks, it's going to be the Rangers, it's going to be MSG. It'll be like fucking twelve billion dollars or something like that. I and I, just, I did find I it. I did find the general tone of it very funny. Of like, we need to stop rewarding bad owners. It's like, dude, yeah. <laughs> we're the least popular person in the tri-state area yeah. my entire life until like eighteen months ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I. But if anybody who's like not in the loop on this, I, I'm going to read some of the quotes from this from this article. This is an article by Woj that includes quotes from a letter that Dole had sent to the rest of the owners. Made the main one. The home run headline is. The NBA has made the move to an NFL model, de-emphasizing and depowering the local market. Soon, your only revenue concern will be the sale of tickets and what color next year's jerseys will be. Don't worry, because due to the revenue pooling, you are guaranteed to be neither a success nor a failure. Failure. He's kind of cooking. I don't, I don't know the exact details well, on, mean, the, on the media deal. The thing is about this is like it's very self-serving. Like he yes. is upset because it's devaluing. MSG potentially, yes. which he obviously has a major stake yes. in. Yes. Um, but I don't actually disagree. Like I do as much as the media rights deal. Look, I, I get that the league's goal doesn't need to align with mine. The league's goal is to, Hey, can we sign contracts that maximize our bottom line? And that's their goal. But like, as a fan, I mean, I'm sure there. I have all these streaming services because I'm a fucking loser and I do nothing with my life other than watch sports and movies. Um, but like for people that don't have these or can't afford them, yeah, it's going to be annoying. You might have to, you know, uh, get get comfortable with your uh, illegal stream game. Not that I would ever suggest anybody should do that. Get ready uh, to learn stream east, buddy. Yeah, get yeah, learn stream east. That'll be your good pal. Um, but like. Yeah, I mean, I think that that part of it sucks and it, it's real. But I mean, it's like, look, man, like, I, I don't know what to tell you because at the same time that you're bitching about this, which is basically like bitching about the accessibility for local fans, you're charging fucking $6 billion for like nosebleeds for game three against the Pacers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's really hard to reconcile all of this other, other than to just be like, yeah, he's just upset that he has to split his money with like, fucking dan gilbert in, yeah. in cleveland probably because he's like dan gilbert is fucking worth more than me like why am i why do i have to give this fucking asshole money um and i i actually i do understand that part of it i do i've always thought that like it, it operating more the way european sports would be inherently fair i understand why the league doesn't want that because you obviously then can risk things like bankruptcy which they definitely don't want uh for any individual franchise so I understand all of it. I, I I get Dolan's point. I actually think it's a pretty valid point from a business perspective, but it's inherently self-serving. So I, I don't really care that it's like he's cooking or whatever. It, yeah, I mean, it, it does suck that like there really isn't a ton of financial interest in, if you're an owner. It really doesn't matter if your team's good or not. Like you're yeah, gonna you're yeah. gonna make. A That's why I thought it was so funny that like all these these poor, like you know these cheap bitch broke boy owners got so mad at like the warriors and clippers for spending all the tax yeah like, why do you care all that all that tax money goes back to the other owners that's who gets right. the tax money is the, uh, the teams who don't pay the tax i don't know fuck these. like i it's like owning a team went from like a, a rich guy thing to like flex on other rich guys like an investment because it used to just be like a flex on you so i'm gonna just make my team better but now it's that, now it's just to make more, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it is like I do. This idea that the NBA can become the NFL is very, very stupid. Like, it just it, the sport is so much different. Um, and the I understand games don't people. Mean enough. Yeah, the games don't mean enough, and then like the, just the nature of the sport is so different. And like, I know people will be like, well you know, the Chiefs have won three of the last four and in the NBA, they've had a new fucking champion in the last, whatever, five, six years, wherever many it is. And I, I, I think that's, that's cool. You can, you can pretend that that's like very, very valuable, but like, you, I'm sorry, you're never going to have the week to week kind of like swings because to your point, well, every game matters more. Um, 
Like you're not, it's, you're just not going to have the, at least the, the perception of parody that exists in the NFL, in the NBA. Because guess what, dude? Nobody gives a shit about like the fucking playing, the, like the five teams fighting for the playing berths. Like nobody cares about them. The only people that care about them are us, us three, sure. and anybody listening to this podcast sure. who is obsessed with the NBA. Like, sure. like the fucking like the average guy that's you know listening to Stephen A. talk about Jason Tatum's aura. Probably doesn't give a shit about the Hawks. Like, oh, they're the Hawks they're Raptors number. nine ten playing. Yeah, movie. the, the yeah. thirty the thirty eight win Hawks versus the thirty four win Raptors for the right to be the nine seed. Yeah, it's gonna go. I'm led by it over here, man. I'm, I'll be by, in for that. Led by Live on Canada's Amazon. Son. Led yeah. by Canada's son, R.J. Barrett. Um, but yeah, I, I just like it, it is. I, I actually do think that like if somebody other than him wanted to make that point, that would be a pretty cool article or whatever to write about because i do think there's something there but i mean as far as dolan's concerned it's just like yeah dude just we get it you're you're mad that you got to spend you got to give money to like you know fucking who's the guy in utah the, um, their owner I I they have tech remember. pros now right yeah i don't know yeah and i and oh, i do like... think yeah it is and it, it, look he is absolutely right that the model the nba has moved to you effectively have a hard cap now so owners have excuses to like well, well I, I know which will be great the, yeah so you That'll can't go over the second apron or whatever and uh that basically guarantees that every team will turn a profit which has been their goal going back to the cba they signed in 2010 which you know brought the BR, bri split from 57 to the players and 43 to the owners to the 51 49 model they have now uh, and that's when they first introduced a harsher luxury tax payment, and it's become increasingly uh, stringent as each CBA has progressed. And now we have this second apron, which is effectively a hard cap, and um, you know it it leads to stuff like the Clippers making zero sense when they're like, "Well, we were gonna like you know fucking offer Paul George, but then uh, the second apron." <laughs> we actually, we go, actually go, couldn't. Go, uh, yeah, <laughs> go 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 look at the Phoenix Suns fan spo trade asset tab. If you want it's to learn so about funny. the second apron consequences, <laughs> I believe I believe they have one second round until thirty, and it is a protected Celtic second rounder in like twenty twenty eight or something. Like yeah, that. but the the funniest thing with them is they just like keep pulling these shitty seconds out of their ass because they'll be like, well, we'll give you a fourth swap on the swap the that we already gave you. Are so it's yeah. kind of like, it's kind of like you gave like a 14 year old a credit card. And they just, <laughs> they're like, so I can just buy whatever I want with this. Piece Wait, so of I could get un unlimited like, V bucks. And like, they just have no concept of how credit works in the slightest. And they're just like, <laughs> well, they're, they're the going to be the worst team in the NBA for like 15 years. They're, they're going to be so bad. The the good thing for them is that Isaiah Thomas is that fourteen year old, so I'm sure he'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay, that was the Dolan check in. Um, no, I have a couple. I, I have like them. They're I writ, I wrote these down in an order, but like the order wasn't a good order. So I'm just gonna I'm hopping around the board here. The next thing I want to talk about is the Joel Embiid interview. You may have you may have seen it. You may you may have heard about it. You may have read it. You may have listened to it. But uh, Joel Embiid did a sit-down interview with the New York Times, and the article is titled, Joel Embiid Believes He Could Have Been the Goat. That's the title. That's the title of the article. And um, there's a couple insane quotes. The, the biggest, most insane quote was, they asked him about, like, oh, you know, in sports, a lot of people operate like it's life and death. Is professional sports life and death? And here, here is, his, here is his, his response. He said, it's not. I mean, even when it comes to winning... Everybody always asks me, how would you feel if you won a championship? I'm like, if it happens, it would be great. But if it didn't, what do you want me to do? It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't be. It, it won't be because I didn't try. I work hard. And if I if it doesn't happen, what do you want me to do after I retire? Cry about it? No. Life is bigger than basketball. I want you to fucking go away. That's what I dude, want you to do after you retire. <laughs> I believe that that is the attitude athletes should have. Yes. They shouldn't fucking say it. Like yes, you gotta just, say dude, like, 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 okay, like, no, it's everything. Like my whole life, like you, you gotta pan and just be yeah. like, it's my whole. life. He also is fucking not serious. Like th this is not. Well, oh, great that you bring that up. This is so, not how he feels about this. I guarantee that. And he, and this is him, like, 
this is this is just like what you say when you're kind of like ah, I I want I want people to like I want to get some heat off me and pe-. it's like who the fuck thinks this? There's no way he there's there's the only way the only reason he's saying this is because he's genuinely aware of like the narrative around him at this point. It's not a narrative. It's just like an accurate, yeah, fucking analysis of what what has happened. It's like. You know, he even talked about it in the article. He's like, oh, you know, well, if, I, if, it, if my fucking face didn't break 17 times, I yeah. would have been the GOAT. And it's like, great, dude. If like, well, you guess know, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, wow, that's that's really cool. Like if fucking Patrick Ewing's knees didn't fucking turn into dust five years in his career, he might have been the greatest big man ever. But you know what? It did. And like, that's yeah. how life works. You don't get to just like live in hypothetical land. Um, I also found the part where he was bitching it. Like, or not, this is a separate thing, but this came out what a couple days ago. Where he's, shitting, years ago. Yeah. where he's shitting on Jason Tatum, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you went yeah, like really seven of weird. nineteen, threw the ball over, threw the ball away, feed ten turnovers in this game, like, in game five against the Knicks, and your team won. Like, also, what are you just like shitting on your team? You're just like, yeah, yeah man. right, yeah, right before that, he did that whole thing. Um, like LeBron, you know, he's really LeBron old. can't do it not, all. He can't do it. He's yeah. not really LeBron yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the reality is he's not and you know, he has to fucking bail him out. Yeah. The other the other I quote that I pulled from this is they're talking about his that. they're talking about his son and, and Bede had a son in 2020. Yeah. And they asked him, like, how did that change your life? And he goes, That changed everything. We had him in 2020, and before that, I was not a serious human being. I was always joking around, I was always saying whatever, I was always acting crazy. That was the golden days of my Twitter era. And I guess his son my in 2020 got him out of his Twitter era. I don't know. I'm not an active follower on the uh, Troel and Bede Twitter account. But um, I don't I don't know if uh, if pre and post 2020, I don't know if like the level of seriousness like changed. Did it change? It didn't change to me. I mean, is he going to show up in shape at any point in his yeah, career? For I don't know. Season? I, like I, I know I'm like a fat guy, so like I guess I don't, I, I don't really have. A, a <laughs> You're not in the NBA, have, but like I do find it weird how it's like he does show up every season, and like oh you know he, he sucks the first five every year because he has to play himself in the shit. Like why is that just like the assumed like he's the only player who does that? Like why, yeah. why, is, why can't he just show up? Well, well it's like it's. Go. It, well, it's dumb because people will like compare him to like Shaq, and I'm like, okay, here's the difference: Shaq would show up out of shape, and then he'd play himself into shape, and then they'd win the fucking championship, right? That's that's how that worked for like three straight years. When Joel Embiid shows up out of shape, plays himself into shape, and then leads the Sixers to win a championship, nobody will care. Nobody will care. But until then, that criticism is valid because you have not fucking done it. And you know, like he he has this thing where he likes to like he does like trolling and that's fine everybody likes to troll a little bit do a little trolling do a little trolling um but like he he did that interview last year and then i mean in 2022 23 around the all-star break if i remember where he was like well you i don't know why there's so much pressure on me like i don't have two mvps i don't and he was like yeah, so was obviously just... talking about Jokic, and obviously Jokic goes on with the absolutely historic performance on the way to winning a championship and it's like, like this is why nobody fucking likes you, dude. Because you're an asshole to all your contemporaries, and all of them have done more. As like, and I'm sorry, you can sit here and be like, yeah, well, he's better than Jason Tatum. Cool, man. Jason Tatum. Here's what I know: he's going to show up in shape. He's going to play fucking 75 games, and his team is going to probably make the conference finals every year for the foreseeable future. And, yeah. and and it's like, and it, and yeah, you can be like, well, he's got all this talent around him. And yeah, that's true. Do you know why that is maybe though? Because his game, the way he plays, his position makes it so that if you want basically anybody in the NBA, they make sense on that roster. Next to Jason yeah. Tatum, because he can play with anybody. So like, I'm sorry, this, this, and be, and I, 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 and did I miss this thing where Joel Embiid has not played with talented teammates throughout the entirety of his fucking career? Did I miss that? Like, you played with James Harden. You played with Tyrese Maxey. You played with yeah, Jimmy Butler. It, it's been very unfortunate for his PR that Maxey is like, just oozes like ability and charisma because he had this like veil of protection that was Ben Simmons, and then yeah. it <laughs> got a big veil that was James Harden. But now his co-star is someone who are like 
maybe the two disliked, most disliked players by the media of the last 15 years. And yeah. now his co-star, well, now he's Paul George. Maybe that's back. I don't know. But um, <laughs> the, now his co-star is like adored. Like everybody, everybody loves Max. Like he's fun. Yeah. He plays hard. He's got win. So like now he's the bad guy of the Sixers star duo, which is a new thing for him. And it's yeah. just, you know, well, and, and I think I would, he does get a ton of shit. No, yeah, and he definitely does. And like the thing is, like it, it, the reality is, he, you play a first round series against the Knicks. That's a, a marquee team. So everybody was watching, and it was like that was like the best fucking series the playoffs. It was, the only, it was like the only yeah. good first round series. Yeah, and and it was, yeah, and it was, and even prior to the series, everybody was like kind of pumped for that matchup, right? That was like one of the ones everybody's like, oh yeah, this series is gonna be really good. His conduct, let's call it, throughout that series was less than flattering. And this is not like the first time. It's just that you played a new, like the Knicks. So it's a big fucking market. Everybody's watching that series. Um, but he, he's done this shit before. He did this to the, he did this to Jared Allen when he was on the Nets where he like, kicked, him in the I was just kick yeah. Nick Claxton in the dick in a playoff game. And that's not the most famous dirty play he's done. It's not even, it's not even top five. It's not even like top five like, most dirty NBA he, plays. Not it's like, like, it was like the opening 30 seconds of, I think game three. Yeah, I remember. And like, yeah, clack, clack. I mean, totally. But he just kicks him in the dick. Like he he steps over him, which is a total asshole thing to do. But then he just launches his leg, up. and he didn't get thrown out. And uh, but yeah, he kicked him in the dick, and it's not because, like you said, it, uh, Jared Allen, Jared Dudley shit is probably more famous. It's not even yeah. the most noteworthy <laughs> dirty play he's done versus that's in the playoffs. Yeah, he's just an unlikable person, and so that entire interview with the fucking Times was a joke. I mean, it was like first of all. I just I cannot stand these fucking interviews where it's like you get access to this athlete and then you ask them nothing. And I understand that like part of the reason you're getting the access is to basically ask them nothing and allow them to just like jerk themselves off. Um, but to have jo access to Joel Embiid and basically just be like, oh well, you know, this was cool. Like you know, tell us to t tell us about you know what what has gone on with like you in the playoffs and it's just like, ah, you know, bad luck. And that's it. There's no like follow-up question. There's no like, well, was it really bad luck when you just like didn't fucking show up for game seven against the Celtics or like, you know, all these things you can ask him. It's bullshit. Uh, I'm really sick of him. And I've, I've, I've his entire media tour this off season has been insane. ridiculous. Insane. Like I just been disgusting to watch. And to Will's point that he made earlier, uh, having Paul George, maybe that helps him because Paul George somehow, Man, this guy cannot stop lying. Like it's his, but his lies are like at least kind of funny and amusing. Like Joel Embiid isn't even lying; he's just being an asshole. And you're like, why are you an asshole? And I don't know. I did, I did like Paul George being like, oh man, it was like playing for the second team. And I was like, look, that's true. But also, you said you grew up a Clippers fan, so why are you acting like like it was just he's so funny, man. Also, like I I feel like if Paul George had like banged the table to go to the Lakers in 2019, he probably would have ended up on he the Lakers. He would have gone anywhere he wanted to. Go. Yeah, like he could have gone to the Lakers if he really wanted to go there. But like Sam you were Presti, the one who fucking signed up for this. Presti so. was like dying for yeah. for those guys. He's like, it's, I guarantee you, the day that fucking Paul George went into his office and was like. I want to get traded. He's probably like, thank fucking God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get, I want to rebuild this team. I know it's, this is not it. Um, society, society would have been much better if Presti had to trade for um, fucking Ingram and Kuzma <laughs> instead of getting SGA. Yeah. I fucking hate that Thunder team, man. <laughs> Just very, very extremely fortunate banking on the decisions, his first draft decisions, basically, while still paying him out. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. The NBA stuff is just like, dude, you're an asshole. You're dirty. You, you like. I'm sorry. That I still think that entire thing with Mitchell Robinson in game I, is insane. I feel I, like I believe that. a large part of him has leaned into being a villain, which I think is cool and fun and like good for the NBA. But then he's like, I don't understand why people will shit on me. Like, like, <laughs> dude, like you can't, like you can't lean into this, like, like, oh, I'm a troll and like, you know, I'm the, I'm the bad, like, and then also, be like, well, why people like me, <laughs> like. It's like, it's like it's like it's like imagine if like Dylan Brooks said this shit. Oh my god! Really? Yeah, like, like, you don't get like, it. That's a guy. That's a guy who understands. Like he gets that he's the bad guy. Like we we yeah, hate he's bad like, guys. It's more fun. He's like very very happy being the bad guy. Loves the it. LeBron LeBron it. Steph acting like a couple. So boring. I miss when they didn't like <laughs> each other. It's way more fun that way. It's okay. it's we're gonna get one season of like 
washed curry and washed no lasagna. don't say it that was that was the next thing the next thing <laughs> oh, yeah? the next thing was was the lebron steph love affair tour and oh, God. i also wanted to just talk about like knicks and nets fans like how are we watching this olympic team like how are we because we don't have any players on this team i like, have not we... watched this at all i haven't watched it I, at all. I, so, I've, wa- I've watched a few minutes I d- i've never really cared much about international basketball, i so. i'm like quietly hate watching like I, i'm not gonna like go out and be like yeah. i hate america but like in that South Sudan, <laughs> no, in that South Sudan, I, was really, I, was really I want I wanted them to lose so bad. I wanted South Sudan I, to win so bad. Oh my it's, god. It's, I wanted them to it's, lose. It's not that I want Team USA to lose. I'm always just like, well, I feel like you would mean so much more to the other team. Yeah. Like, it would be like so much I don't cooler. really like I don't really care. Like if the US wins, everyone's like, oh yeah, like whatever. Like you're supposed yeah. to do that. Like Germany winning that FIBA thing was like such a huge deal for them. There's probably gonna be yeah. like some like German NBA lottery pick in ten years who like yeah like I love watch with basketball watching the twenty twenty three German FIBA team and yeah. like I, I I don't know like I, especially that South Sudan team because you know like it's been country for like an hour and they didn't have indoor courts so the fact they're the, the, the fact the team whose most prominent NBA player was JT Thor was right there with the Hall of Fame game was really hey, cool. It's like respect, it's respect like a March Madness Gabriel. game. Gabriel, who you have some Wenyan Gabriel respect, please. Thank it's, you. It's like it's like when a it's like when a one and a sixteen or a close game. Like who's going for the fucking ones? Like yeah. Um. Yeah, but anyway, the, like the thing I brought that up, like the LeBron Steph thing, it's just getting started. Like it, ha- it hasn't even we haven't even gotten like it's the real Olympics yet. But like the LeBron Steph tour, the LeBron Steph, like, oh my God, we finally get to team up. Oh my God, I've always loved this guy. Oh my God, I, I'm so excited to play with him. My my tinfoil conspiracy conspiracy bladder here. Any chance we can get Steph on the Lakers for a season? Any chance? Can we do it? I, I think it's more likely LeBron would go to, to the Warriors. Yeah, the other <sighs> just trade wise, it makes more sense. Yeah, I I I, I, I did, I did briefly. Approach. Yeah, I briefly pulled up Fanspo to see if there's any way you can get Steph to the Lakers. You can't. You can't. It's, it's they both so make hard. So much. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the second apron. You can't activate salaries. Um, it well, would have to be like you have to like trade AD. Under, like that's yeah, the they're, only they're, way. Yeah. They're under the second apron, right? Either way, it's like it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to uh, happen. It's, it's also not going to happen because Steph is 100 percent going to retire with the Warriors. And hey, are, are you sure? Yeah, you I'm sure? pretty sure. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, man. You you he, probably would say the same thing about Clay. You would say the same thing about Clay. Three no, years I ago. wouldn't have. No. no, Clay. Clay is he's not just. Sick. Give me a break. Give me a break. Dude. Yeah, he apparently that's been like like I know a couple Warriors people were like and Steph's always like you know like, and he's got a ton of credit like being like a you know like a low maintenance superstar as as they say. Um, yeah. And there's been a lot of the last couple years because even the, like the Warriors know more than anyone like they've gotten old and they're not very good anymore like like oh like celebrating like the greatness of Steph Clay and Draymond and Steph apparently like you know, like. I love Clay Draymond, but like, we're we're not equals. Like, you know, it, it's Steph and, and then Clay and Clay and Draymond. Like, they're yeah. they're the sidekicks. You know, yeah. That's that's just sure. not. Yeah, that's not equal. That's his thing. <laughs> and yeah, like, no. I, if if it, if it happens, it's gonna be LeBron going there. And it's also because like LeBron doesn't. He's not loyal to the to any franchise. That's has been his fucking thing his entire career, right? He was in Cleveland, then he goes to Miami, then he goes to Cleveland, then he goes to the Lakers. And even though he's been with the Lakers now for what is this sixth sixth season or seventh season with the Lakers? Something, something like that. It yeah. just it just feels like every year he's just leveraging them. Like he's just like, yeah. I might go, I might go unless you draft Bronny. I might go like, unless you fifty one million dollars. They could have terribly like, run franchise, right? Like, which is fine. What about so the Lakers he, for fifteen years? It's been any other than a clown show. Besides, like the best player of a generation being like, I want to go live in Los Angeles. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and attach myself to like the biggest brand in the sport, right? Like it was, it made sense for him for a lot of reasons, lifestyle, and you know, in terms of his kind of push to increase his brand or whatever. But like at this point, his brand, he's bigger than the Lakers, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And 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 for him, look, he he got Bronny his contract. He's building his mansion in L.A. Playing playing the season out in in Golden State. In San Fran, it's not that bad. It's not going to be that hard for him. Uh, I think that if that ever happens, it will be with Golden State. It will never be with the Lakers because Steph is never leaving. He's just never going to leave. And I know he made that comment this week about like, well, you know, if we're just going to yeah. try to suck. That, like, was, that, was, a tra- that was a trade for the marketing comment. That's what that was. That was yes. Well, yeah. That, that, yes. It was, it was at least make, show me that you're trying. 
it, like that's what that, that all that comment was to me was like as long as you show me you're really trying then i'll be here but the moment you're like eh, well you know if we suck we suck then i'm out but that that's not gonna happen so yeah. you know he'll probably stop he'll, i mean steph will probably stop being really fucking good in like two years or something like that um yeah. and at that point he might just like be like eh this is great they're gonna give me he'll get the his kobe bryant contract that last contract the lakers gave kobe where it was just like well you're a franchise legend so here you go here's 48 million dollars pal enjoy that <laughs> um last olympics thing we're probably gonna get a joel Embiid versus france game like at some point it may hmm. it might be quarterfinal it might be finals but we're gonna get it and the olympics are in france so like that environment bro that is going to be so fucking great. Like seeing MB do his like foul baiting, arm pulling, elbow hooking shit in France against France, the team that was like really trying to court him to get to play for him, play for them. That's what I'm looking forward to. I've got that matchup circled. I don't know when it's going to be. Hopefully it's uh hopefully it's it's later in the in the bracket. Hopefully it's later. Hopefully the stakes are higher. But um, I'm looking forward to it. What is the starting backcourt for France? I genuinely is it Fournier Frank Nilakina? No, he's off the bench. He's, he's off the bench. Is it um, I believe. I, don't I believe know. for no Killian's not on the team. Killian's not on the team. Um, is it Nando Decolo? It might be Nando, and I think it's Nando and Fournier. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, but their front court. Yeah, but good. the problem was we need we need yeah. Canada's guards and France's bigs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be the only. Yeah. Or you just, or you just have South Sudan's roster. Yeah. yeah, or just have JT Thor, you know. Yeah, yeah, or just have JT Thor. Yeah. Let, let let Royal Ivy just coach him up, and th then you're set. I, I will say, I think I think a lot of this stuff about like, oh man, these last two games for the United States, like, bro, they played the first two games, they destroyed, I forget who the fuck they played, and they clearly were just like uninterested in the warm up games at that point. They, and yeah, they didn't respect their opponent. Yeah, they. LeBron, they, they LeBron, were, I watched like a quarter and a half, maybe. LeBron's defense is like laughable. If, if you told me LeBron is keeping them close on purpose so that he can look awesome, late, <laughs> I, I would believe it. Like I, I, I am. I know Schwinny's a LeBron hater. I am not. I am a fucking I'm not bisexual. Either. Yeah, he, so. he is so arrogant and narcissistic. He would totally do that, and <laughs> as he should. You know, he's earned yeah, the right. You can to do, do it. I also <laughs> just like it's boring. Like it's it's fine if it's boring and you're just like. Yeah, we're, the, the, the games literally don't matter. They're fucking exhibitions. So, And once you win those first two games, and you're the United States, and you're LeBron James, and you're Steph Curry, and you're all these fucking guys, you're probably like, listen, man, we'll turn it on when we need to turn it on. It'll be fine. Like, it, and, you know, it, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be fine. That France team, they will be fortunate to medal, to be honest. Like, that fucking backcourt is so bad. It is so bad. Um, they went two and four, and I think in the warm-ups, Leading up to this tournament, uh, they, I mean, Germany is better than them. Like, Wemby is obviously the best prospect player, however you want to put it, but Germany is a better roster. Like, they, they actually have guards. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Uh, international Dennis Schroeder, so he's a special player. Oh, God. He's like, yeah, he's like one of the goats of international ball. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're better. Canada's better. Like, it's going to be, you don't win these tournaments unless you're, your backcourt actually has talent and they don't have talent back there at all. Shout out Frank though. We'll always respect our guy. Him. Dude, that's my... why I was, I'm going to say like, if I'm picking a team, I'm picking my boy Frank and, and France. I'm not, if I was going to like a hey, force to root for a team in the Olympics, basketball wise, I'm rooting for France. I'm rooting my for guy, France. Uh, it's my guy. Uh, Kuzmiskis. Um, Mindagos oh, Kuzmiskis. The, the oh, tall wow. white guy. Who was, like, a wing. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, Lithuania. Lithuania. He's, he's, Lithuania didn't make it. Uh, Lithuania, they lost, to, they lost to Puerto Rico. Lithuania. Like, you know what they like, what they really need to do with this? I was like, this guy's not yeah. bad. I was kind of you a know, believer. What they really need to do with this Olympic shit is they need to expand the field. Because yeah. you, you got like fucking you got Luca at home, right? You got you know, you got it just it's just weird to me to like not have more teams in this when there's clearly talent around the world that should be there um but yeah i mean 16 teams would make more sense the 12 that's another thing too 12 teams is so weird i don't i don't understand how this group play works like yeah so fucking eight teams presumably get out right but like i don't how really does understand that... it either yeah. i don't understand it it's very weird. um i will say I, I am rooting for the great united states of america and every other sport 
hands down. Every other sport, I'm a patriot, bald eagle, stars and stripes. But for basketball, like I'm agendas come first. I'm going with Frank and uh, and fucking Bead and fuck Steph. So there you go. Nice. There you go. Um, the last one, you know, I, the last one I, I kind of saved the weaker one for last because this one I, I didn't really have too much to talk about. But I want to talk about Netflix. Netflix, you know, they have uh, kind of had a, an up to, an up and down past ten years. They had a great pandemic when they were cooking a lot of original content and all that stuff. But but lately, next year is going to be a huge year for Netflix. Actually, it'll be a huge starting in December, twelve months for Netflix because Netflix is getting NFL games. They're getting the NFL Christmas games. And they have a long-term plan to get like more NFL games as time goes on. And this is that that's the biggest thing in their their new foray into live television. They've had the Tom Brady roast, which was phenomenal. I don't know if, if you haven't watched it, it was a great long. live production. It was long, but it was great. It's like it was really I, yeah. I could not it's like what three hours? Yeah, it's like it's like two hours forty five. Yeah, it's long. I went I, I put I, I went to put it on. I was like, oh, this would be like a fun forty five minute thing. I I, was, no. I mean it was enjoyable, but like I didn't get it. It was great. I, I, I did it I, in <laughs> multiple sittings. I couldn't do it like in one night. I, I it took me like a week to just I did it in like twenty minute portions, but I, I, I got through it. It was fucking great. Most importantly to me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make this a uh, wrestling pod, but Will, I thought of this before you before we knew you were coming on here. WWE Monday Night Raw is going to Netflix in January. That is a huge fucking deal. This is the longest running episodic television show in American history. WWE Monday Night Raw. It is going off cable TV and onto Netflix, a streaming exclusive show, which means they will no longer have to be out at 11 p.m. sharp because like some other fucking recorded movie has to go on at 11 o'clock, which means they can go over that limit. They can start cursing if they want. They can do great shit. They can have... They're going to have all these major, major stars coming back to WWE because they want to like, they want to have the launch of WWE of Raw on Netflix, like be huge. They've got Cena coming back. They've got CM Punk here. I, they haven't announced this, but I would count on The Rock being there to open Monday Night Raw on Netflix. And uh, I'm just saying like Netflix also has, Netflix is, is kind of going back to their roots and buying a lot of old like classic shows that are just like guaranteed to get money and guaranteed to get people to watch them. They recently got lost one of my favorite shows ever back on netflix great great show and uh yeah i just wanted to check in on netflix their their new live tv era they are crushing it on the numbers wise their earnings are fucking insane their stock price is fucking insane and uh they have like asserted themselves as as like the greatest streamer media entity right now so i'm looking forward to nfl on netflix i'm looking forward to raw on netflix and looking forward to other live events. They were supposed to have the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight on Netflix. I don't know if that's still happening, but it's uh I know that's in the cards. So Netflix live TV, another huge dub. Raw on Netflix, huge dub. That's it. Um sure. Yeah, Netflix is Netflix is a fucking monster. Yes. Yeah, they they seem to have survived the streaming bubble. There was those big streaming bubble bursts of like all of these like services popping up and like none of them were making any fucking money. But, yeah. Um, but Netflix figured it out. They got the ad, the ad thing going on, the different levels the, of plans. The football um, schedule the for Christmas is insane. Yeah. It's, Wait, it's, I, it's like even look at it. I know it's insane, but I got to look at it. Hold on. I, I don't know it. It's they're, they're playing like, there's going to be like an NFL game, like seven out of eight days, like between Christmas. Okay. And New it's they've just um, realized like, Oh, we can put this on any day. And oh, there's only, there's only, well, you, there's you know, when they realize this, they realize this because of COVID. Because yeah. if you remember during yeah. like COVID, they would have to like cancel games and then reschedule them. There was like this. I remember there was one time because they had to move a Bills Titans game, and they were just like, I mean, look, the NFL during that also hilarious. What their like random application of the standards were, they would just be like, yeah, fucking yeah, this guy, but he's fine, he's good, he can, he's good to go now. Uh, but they were like, yeah, they had a, they had a weeks where it would be like, oh well, I guess we'll have this game on Tuesday and. We'll have to make this one up on Wednesday. And, and then they were like, oh, wait, all these games are getting monster fucking ratings. Why are we doing this more? Yeah. And they I, they also realized that they don't need to give a fuck about the NBA. Yeah, they should have. I feel, I feel, I, no, yeah, I feel like for a long time, you know, NBA on Christmas, that was like, I feel like for, for like a normal NBA fan, that, 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 that might as well be opening night for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Like they're like, okay, like football is kind of winding now. I'm like, you know, I'm going to and <laughs> they were just yeah. like, if we put football games on Christmas, we'll destroy the NBA and the ratings, and it doesn't affect us at all. So real, who cares? Re, if we... Real ones know that early November is where your bones are made in the NBA. Is that true? <laughs> That's the no. 
<laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the you guys for their annual 11 and 5 start that fucks with their pick. I actually, th- my favorite, I think the real kind of like, if you're talking like for, for, I think like the best night where you're like, okay, the NBA is like fully in swing is the night before Thanksgiving. They, everybody fucking plays that night. Yeah. And there's like, there's like 15 games on. It's fucking awesome. Um, Black yeah, Friday. They, yeah. Yeah. But like, oh, no, that's a day after. That's a day after. That's a day after. But like, yeah, the, the NFL is just, I mean, they're, that Christmas schedule is going to be awesome. And I'm probably going to watch every single one of those fucking games. It's uh, by the way, it's Casey and Pittsburgh is the first game, and then the late game, later game is is Baltimore and Houston. So like, not the greatest games, but like great yeah, games. Baltimore, Houston's fucking. Huge. I, I just hope that the, the thing I am worried about, like I am excited for like Sunday night basketball on it on NBC, whatever they're going to fucking call Dude, it. I'm so um, so hyped for that. If I'm just, I really hope that they do like like they flex games and we get like, you know the Thunder versus the Sixers. We don't just get LeBron and Steph or even not even fucking LeBron and Steph because they both missed 30 games a year now. Like it's not just yeah. like, I, I'm worried it's just going to be I, like, like he was worried. I think there's I think they're smart enough to like to know to like give us a good variation. I, I think I think Amazon is just going to do a good job with it. Like I, I think they understand that what my guess is the NBA wanted them to win this bid, right? Yeah. Because they oh, want yeah. I, I think it's obvious that like they were sick of TNT. Like TNT was not taking the product seriously anymore. They did a no. terrible job of pushing the sport, of pushing players, of pushing teams and coaches. Like it was just constantly shitting on everybody. Yeah. And that's obviously not what they want. And then if you look at the NFL, I mean, you you'll put on fucking NFL Live in like the middle of March, and they're sitting there like praising, you know, oh man, I loved the fucking Panthers signing this third defensive back off of like the Steelers practice squad or something. And it's like, that's what they want. They want that. And they don't want this other they, shit. And they Amazon, cause they're going to obviously like, they want to be in the NBA business going forward. Like these, these NBA networks have to learn to stop sucking the golden teeth. That is LeBron and Steph. It's like, they're going to be fucked and like, no, race for like, that's why like, that's why the last three months was like the Anthony Edwards Slobberfest show. Oh, like they're God. just so desperate for a guy to let's go, American star who's good. Finally, what if it's like but not what if, boring as fuck? Tatum, like, that's but, really but what if yeah. but what if Tatum had Anthony Edwards aura though? And I'm oh, like, God. why don't you say what you're really trying to say here, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you do that? What was the first headline? It was some was it was something about a shame after that. It was, it was really about, the perfect. Yeah, re- it, was, it was like another police shooting, and it was does Jason Tatum have aura? I was like, it was what a segue. It was a direct <laughs> ripoff of a truly sad week in you know, plus two thousand five redraft. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we're are this yeah. the six pack over. That, those yeah, those are my six right. things. So if Let's you guys have this. any, we, any we have Will topic. here. We have Will here. The Knicks and Nets did um, make a big trade. That that I is a thing did. that happened. Uh. Well, took five I guess... shots that night. Nice <laughs> for five first um... round picks. <laughs> you won free and a pick swap. You got to do six. You got to do six. Well, that could no, be like, a, a, that could be like a half shot. <laughs> no, because that one's functionally uh, meaningless because the Nets can already swap with the Suns in 2028. And oh, I you're shit. There's no world where the Knicks are going to be worse than the Suns. Let's go. We're going to start calling it the four for the four first round picks for McCall trade. Then that's that's what <laughs> no, I'm going five. with. It's yeah, that still Bucks five. Pick should be good. That Bucks that Bucks pick. No, be that's. Awesome. Like I didn't, like, I thought this was going to be more NBA focused, and uh, my one like hot take I have, um, I think the Bucks are going to be a playing team this year. I like Ooh. it. I like it. Um, so I you're like it. so you're not buying the like Dame is going to be better because he's oh going to be fully like yeah kinda... guys famously get small guards famously get better into their thirties. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I no, I'm with you, but there's that school of thought like, of like. It was a tough year. And, like, and I mean, the, fucking, fucking uh, on. He's gotten over the divorce. Yeah, tr- Trill. They've been talking about this all year. This is a divorce year. Yeah. <laughs> the rhetoric of the rhetoric, uh, the narrative around the Bucks offseason, which everyone's been saying basically the same thing. Of like, well, you know, considering they only had minimum contracts, and they did. not That is exactly what we fucking said about the Phoenix Suns offseason last oh, summer. No, I'm with you. Like, yeah, oh, I'm right. with you here. Yeah. Minimum guys fucking suck. Like. <laughs> Like Gary like, Trent, there's a reason. There's fine. a reason Gary Trent was available. There's a reason he like, could M- get him. Malik Beasley was so like, fantastic for them, and I, I don't think that's going to be. And Torian Prince, Jay Crowder, it's fucking same thing. 
it's a real tooth that changes everything going on with the Bucks. And they were only like two games up out of the play in last year, because as I'm sure you guys will locked into the standing more than I was, that two through seven was like, <laughs> yeah, everybody was right there. And they're just yeah. really old and slow, and everyone around them is getting better. Like, I, I don't think you could even make an argument they're any better than fourth. I just think teams like Cleveland, the Pacers, and Orlando are younger, they're deeper, they're more athletic. And, like, you know, like they're, they're, they're the kind of teams that are going to rack up regular season wins more easily. Yeah, I mean, I also just – I feel like people are – I've seen so much of the, like, well, you know, last year that fucking starting group was still, like, a plus 17 and a half. And I'm like, that's cool. There's no way you watched them play last year and were like, this team is, if they're just healthy, that's it. Like, they're, yeah, and they're... like, it shock anyone if Lopez is just like completely done this year. Like, he took he a pretty terrible big step back last year. Last year. He looked and terrible he, last year. 36, 37. He's, he's the oldest of them. He's very old. And, and did, he's they, been... did they just pay him? No, put him last summer. It's a, it's last summer. Two year deal this, this last year. So he'll, I, I guess he'll kind of do like a. Like the Conley and Horford extensions, yeah. like he'll probably do something like that. But Middleton, like if Middleton could opt if in, he's I just think. done. Like if he's just done, like that wouldn't surprise anyone. And like they're fucked. What are they like? Well, Bobby the, Portis, thirty-five minutes a game. <laughs> the the other thing with him is like Doc's. I, I think Doc just doesn't like Brooke. So like they've been like that's just been this thing that's simmering in the background. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I thought that was that was actually when people were like. You know, we because we had traded for like those three protected picks, and I remember just like over the last year, you know, people were constantly like, "Well, which one is the best one? Which is the worst one?" And I was always just like, "I don't know, the man. I think that real? Bucks. Yeah, I think the well, I, not even just that. Like the Bucks one is like they're not trending well. Like they seem bad. So they've probably them. They've lost the first round two years in a row. And it was yeah. like, well, Giannis got injured. That's also bad. Giannis has had <laughs> serious injuries like three years in a row now. Like." <laughs> Like yeah, they Doc, just have a lot of they have a lot of red flags. Oh, I will say. Well, it was also like Middleton. Oh, well, Middleton got hurt a couple years ago. I'm like, yes, and he's always yeah. hurt. <laughs> and he had two more ankle surgeries this off season. Like, they just never. Like, you know, Vols. Uh, they talk about this a lot with like Phil and Zay. They just never hit on draft picks ever. Oh God! Yeah. Like they they've yeah. made one good draft pick in the last seven years, and it was Dante Divincenzo who they traded for the watch Serge Ibaka. Yeah, like they, they just like never hit on picks ever. Yeah, like and they don't even can't function. And like they, like they have like a nice, like they have a good, good, like they're like top six. Like it's been really good. Like they want a title with them, but they're getting really old. They definitely slip, and they just keep doing like nothing to replace them. Like they just keep signing Jay Crowder variants and calling it a day. <laughs> Wes Matthews, Torian Prince, Pat Connaughton. It was all the Pat same Connaughton. fucking player. He can shoot thirty-seven percent on wide open corner threes. And otherwise, I I did like I I found the well they got Gary Trent stuff so funny. I'm just like, like the dude, you're not winning a championship because you signed Gary Trent. That's just like, like not. That he'll, he'll make he'll make a lot of shots for them. Malik Beasley made a lot of shots for them. Like I just don't I don't think it's 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 a big it's a difference maker at all. No. It's not. It's not. They're, and their move the, I like it, the best is fucking DeLon Wright. And if that's like your big move and you already were a very flawed team that lost in the first round and the teams around you all got significantly better, I, I think I just they're cooked. Yeah. I, I'm looking at like the, the standings now. Like there are six teams that are hands down better than them. Like there are six teams. Yeah. That and that's seven. Like, yeah, I, that's, I, Boston, have that. Boston, New York, Philly, uh, Cleveland, Orlando. Orlando, Orlando, and Indiana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you know what? Miami might just like Miami yeah. again. Like Miami yeah. might just do it again, and they might be better this than Milwaukee. Thing. No, th this is this the the Miami thing that's going to happen. That's going to be really fucking annoying again. Is going to be uh, Kalel Ware is going to have a couple really good games to start the season, and then like most rookies will drop off. But he will be talked about as like. A future franchise player, premium like a, blue, asset. a blue chip trade piece, and, and when they start throwing him into the hero deal, the hero package, um, that's going to be great. Oh, but if, what if they put Kalel Ware in for the in the hero package? It's like pretty sure that still doesn't. I, I don't think you're going to get fucking like Giannis because you threw in Kalel Ware, buddy. Like they, I just don't they, think that's happening. They should, hang, they should hang in the rafters a fanspo screenshot of hero two first picks. <laughs> 
Just, just put that <laughs> trade package in the rafters that never actually gets moved for anything. <laughs> I feel like Jokic, uh, though. He, he's pretty so, good. He is pretty good. Uh, so going back to this trade, uh, look, I, we, I think last time I had you on, we talked about kind of like the Nets just need to like, they just need to get their picks back. They got their picks back. Um, yeah. And then they got, I, all the I was very back. happy. So yeah, I mean, you, they basically, your timeline that night was like, I, as soon as the trade happened, I was like, Oh my God, Will is going to be fucking like freaking out over this. Like he is like, the most vindicating I, moment of your NBA I felt, fandom career. I felt like a hot girl. I got like, Free yeah, text, yeah. like 20 DMs <laughs> on Twitter. It was the most popular I've ever been in my life. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I, I was, I like, I really could not have been lower on the Nets out, like that bullshit of like, oh, we're going to have cap space in 2025. And maybe we can sign Brandon Ingram or some bullshit. Well, the, the funniest. Like, like, I was like, oh, we're going to be the new Bulls. The, the funniest kind of like version of that that I saw was after it kind of became apparent. That Mitchell was staying with Cleveland. There were people that were like, I mean, look, we could get Derek White in 2025. I was like, are you fucking kidding? Like, really? This is the fucking. Oh, yeah, that's, this I is, know who you're talking about. Yeah. This is the plan here. No, I, no, I think. Yeah, uh, keep Derek White and who are the other two? The two Wolves guys, Nikhil Alexander Walker yeah, and Alex yeah. Reed. So it My always, goodness. everyone always says that the way to build a good team is to buy high on role players from other from good teams. My, my good friend, Billy good. Reinhardt. Um, but friend of the friend of the show, friend of the show. But yeah, you know, yeah. Se- se- seventeen first, and then like I kind of think they just created some margin for error. Like I, I, I'm of I am team like like tear down is the easiest shit you can do. Like it's, it's it's not a very hard like it takes like it's usually hard to get your owner to sign off on it. So good for Joe Sai for waking up and smelling the coffee. But um, the reason like like stupid teams that stay bad like the fucking Pistons is because they never had any extra picks. It's like you're just putting all your eggs in one basket, here. and if that guy whiffs a little, like you're fucked. Like look at the Rockets, like they drafted Jalen Green and Jabari Smith at the top with their own pick. Back, to- those are especially green, like both very, I would say, pretty underwhelming top three picks. But then in, in those draft classes, they got Shen Goon and Tari East. So you just have to get extra picks and get as many bites of the apple as possible. And as long like they should, they should be fine. Yeah, I mean, how did you? So I actually, what did you think about the Houston piece of it? Because I think like the Knicks piece of it is nice. Like you get these first from the Knicks. Personally, I don't think twenty five or twenty seven will be good. I think twenty nine has a chance to be good. Thirty one definitely has a chance to be good. Um, but like those picks have their value is so kind of unknown right now, and they're so far away that who cares? But the what did you think of the 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 Phoenix? Rocket swapped of it. Yeah, I actually I mean, like that for I like that for both teams. And and I, I think the thing for Houston, which made sense to me, is like uh, my perception of this was the Nets were probably gonna continue doing the stupid thing unless and and I think the Nets and the Rockets, I think, suspected they were gonna continue doing the stupid thing unless they made this trade. So those picks just yeah. became more valuable once the Nets got that trade in line. Yeah, it was very um, weird. It's not a negotiation we've seen very much. There's yeah. no like precedent. But so, that, yeah, like obviously, like I would have preferred, like just trading him to Houston and having and getting all because they basically don't control any Phoenix picks now. It's very complicated and stupid. But um, and I think it makes sense for the Rockets to kind of kick the can down the road on their yes. picks. Yep. Because yep. they have all these guys they're gonna have to pay, so you're gonna need picks to like replenish your roster. Like Shangun and I mean, Thompson are like making jillion dollars. Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah, like just don't fucking trade them for Devin Booker. That would be stupid. Yeah, no. let the Knicks let the Knicks do that. Let's no, the Knicks the Knicks are, don't have a Devin Booker package anymore. Anybody that still thinks they do is come on. We've yeah. got Sergeant well, Randall. Well, I, well, actually, selfishly, I very much like the Suns to trade Devin Booker to the Rockets for the Suns pick because. The Suns getting their picks back isn't that attractive because they have so many swaps out that like half of their picks would still be completely over. So like the Nets still have access to their 2028 pick. So if the Suns blew it up, you know, that'd be very good. Plus plus Ishbio is you just trust him to to not have any idea what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. So there's that going for you. Um so yeah, but I, I, I thought I thought the Rockets piece was good. And I think like people kept forgetting. I was like Look, I think the Nets 100% did the right thing. Like, there's no question to me that they did the right thing. Um, 
But like keeping that 2027 Nets pick is actually like kind of a nice thing because the Nets yeah. suck. And they even if they if they hit on 2025 and 2026, even if you hit on those players, there's a decent chance that like you're still a bad yeah, team. They'll still they still probably won't. I don't know. The East sucks. Yeah, they'll, the East they'll does have, suck. They'll have like six firsts in the two next two drafts. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah, and the Rockets probably are trying to trade that for Cam Johnson because they're one of the Cam Johnson teams. That's a, I, I, that's what I assume they would be offering because yeah. I don't think they're going to give up one of their young players for him. Um, but is Cam? Yeah, is Cam Johnson still being there. I mean, this entire offseason is so weird because it just feels like I, I, fucking Danny I kind Ainge of, again. Yeah, I kind of think center of attention. I kind of think we get a lot of deals that happen randomly in like sometime like between August and September. I think there's a lot of extension stuff. Yeah. Like for the Knicks, we can't extend Randall until August third. I think it's like August. No, 5th. no, no. We can't August extend 3rd? him until August third, but if he extends on August sixth or later, he can't ah, be yeah. traded this season. Yep. Um so there's stuff like that going on. The marketing thing is in that's gonna that something is gonna happen there within a week. Because I, he's, I, yeah, I just, just can the Warriors and them just fucking do it already. It seems like when rather than if at this point, like the Jazz cut two guys randomly yesterday to create two extra they? roster spots. Yeah, who did they? I mean, cut? it was like non, it was like non guaranteed guys, like Kenny. Guys Lofton, that I would yeah. probably know. Oh, Kenny Lofton Kenny, yeah. and uh, Derek Basley, who's been in the NBA for twenty years, but is somehow still nineteen. Is Kenny Lofton still fat? No, he slimmed down. Oh, he got, oh. yeah, nice. he slimmed down. He's a fun player. I kind of like still- him. A, a larger NBA player, but yeah. uh, slim down. But yeah, like I mean, they also like the, the funniest thing was when they did the Russ trade, and people initially were like, "Oh, Russ back to Utah." I'm like, "Be real, dude. Come Russ on, is yeah. not yeah, yeah. yeah Russ is never. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna Westbrook's gonna sign one day deal with the Jazz when he retires, so he can retire yeah. the Utah Jazz. Uh, so it's the only you, team he's been on twice. Are you excited to watch Cam Thomas this season? Oh yes, as everyone knows, <laughs> I am a huge Cam Thomas fan. Always been a huge supporter. Uh, no, dropping the bit uh, because this is the Strickland podcast. I, uh, to put it simply, Camp Thomas makes me feel the way R.J. Barrett made Tyrese feel. Yeah. Oh, uh, great. very. That's very. A be- that's a beautiful way to put it for our listeners. Very, very similar. Very similar emotions. Where it's like, <laughs> am I on the Truman Show? Is this yeah. a bit to drive me personally insane? Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like this year, I'm all for it. I want he should win the scoring title. Twenty five shots a game. We're He's here, gonna baby. get all the shots he wants. It's gonna be, you know, I, I want him taking as many pull up nineteen footers as his heart desires. Let let, let um, him cook. My my next question: Do they keep Cam Johnson and DFS at, until like the deadline and move them then, or do you think um, they'll move them like like soon? I'd be pretty surprised. It seems like they're gonna go, especially DFS, because like Johnson, I, I sort of get his three year deal. He's only 27, 28. He's the um, one of, one of the oldest young players around. I also think yeah, his perception like of him. Yeah. I, I also think like right now his perception around the league is low, and so you maybe right want to. Yeah, yeah. And yeah I think maybe you want to well, give him half a season to like. Yeah, to like three seasons. He is injury prone. Like, that that is yeah. the one thing that that like like Nets fans hate Cam Johnson because Nets fans only like bad players. Um, ah. The <laughs> so they they hate Cam Johnson because he doesn't take like mid range step back hezies. They're all very ball don't stop. Right? <laughs> the. Uh, but um, like I, I've I've actually like always been like a like I, I was saying like when the Nets before like if I was a contender I'd rather give up one first for Cam Johnson than like three or four first for Mikael Bridges because I just like don't think the gap is like I don't know but um I mean it's worth it for the Knicks because the Mikael trade is what got them to sign Brunson's scam deal so like like that 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 justifies the trade to be like I I, I don't really think it was. A justifiable transaction in a vacuum from their POV, but once you run into the game deal, yeah. I mean, I, I think <laughs> the I think the hardest thing for them, and I I don't even know what to make of this because I don't really have an answer for it. But it was like, I think they kind of knew they had to make a big move this off season because yeah, just with the aprons and shit, and it was like. I know they kicked the tires on the Paul George thing. I don't know how close it got. I heard that it got pretty close. Um, but that was just going to be like, given the fact that you're going to have to give, you, you had to give him his max. That was always going to be part of the deal as we saw, because he had a max offer on the table from a team, which was the Sixers. Um, and then you were going to have to trade an actual player piece for him versus Bogdanovich, who is not 
an actual yeah. player piece. Um, you probably would have to trade multiple, given kind of like what what the reported <laughs> offer was from Golden State yeah. to them. You guys will. It's like there, there's people on this is like section of that Twitter, and specifically with Boy, I'm like, oh, like we got to trade him because like I'm worried he'll steal us a couple wins. Like, do you guys not know what team he was on last year and the the literal historic streak they went on of losing? Yeah, I, I looked it up. They went three and twenty six in games Boy on played the Pistons. Like, I, I think, I think we're good. At the very, if you if you're really that worried about it, you can probably get him to give up a little bit of money and give him a buyout and move on. With your That's life. what I think. Like, yeah, I we, actually think. Have, wait, I'm sorry. Have we gotten a boy on like health update? Because I know he had like two no, major surgeries. No, he, yeah, he'll yeah. be ready we, around we, training camp, though. I think. Are we sure? Are we sure he's ready for training camp? Because like I know that was like in jeopardy when the surgery happened. I actually, have argued he. I I just keep him because you're not going to get any trade value for him. And I would argue he's a perfect tanking player because his defense yeah. is so destructive. It's terrible, and he spaces the court for your young players. And he like like I know he cooks a little bit, but like he mostly just jacks up threes. So like he spaces the floor for young talent, and like he helps you lose. So it's a perfect tanking player. He's kind of he's kind of like fucking awesome too when he goes off. Like it's yeah, oh he's such he's such a badass man. <laughs> yeah, like, we, we yeah. have we have we have breaking news. Not kidding. Really? I swear to God. Former number seven oh! pick Killian Hayes has agreed to one year deal with the Brooklyn Nets. Oh my God, Killian Hayes. They're taking it's yeah they're they're taking this tanking shit very seriously. I love it. <laughs> That's I so love funny. I love I, I love when they say Hayes will have a chance to compete for a roster. Yeah, so I assume that's um what do you call training that? Camp deal? 10 deal? Yeah, yeah it's training camp whatever. deal. But yeah, that's very that's funny. awesome. Good for them. Like, I mean, when that, there was, was a port a while ago that they worked him out, and I was like, this Yeah, like, I remember I was just gonna fit. say they worked him out in Vegas, like a thing they were hosting. It was like a big thing that was reported. Yeah, it was I, like I that. I, was... I, I always like that. That's always like a fun one. Oh, these teams are a lot of teams are going to the Killian Hayes workout. I'm like, yeah. Didn't, I'm didn't sure. the Knicks Who, didn't the Knicks work out Jarrett Culver like before the yeah, draft this year? Yeah, the he was, Bucks, he was the Bucks worked out Isaiah Thomas, right? Yeah, that was so funny. Shams Shams tweet of that was so funny. He was like, Bucks work out two time All Star. I was like, are you fucking serious, bro? Because <laughs> he wants you to watch the stupid fucking video he posts. Oh, I know. Um, I know what he like garbage. That's very. Did, funny. did you do you have any thoughts on? Like I know Jalen Wilson won MVP, and then you also got to see more of Noah Clowney. Tariq Whitehead, are we just assuming he's bad and, and useless for Yeah, I mean, I feel badly. He just is like physically like done. It's like a yeah. Harry Giles situation. Like he's just like yeah. still like three foot. Two. He just he cannot jump at all. And he's like, you know, he's a wing, so like he doesn't really have like that good a handle. Right. His shot is really messed up. Like I, I just it's sad, but I mean, you know, he'll spend a year in the G. Maybe some miracle he can get yeah. help. But like, yeah, I, I'm assuming it's nothing. The, the only young player, the, um, the only young player on the Nets has any good squad. I don't really think the rest of them are bad. Okay, so Jalen Wilson's hot shooting. You're done. To- like, yeah, like he should just chuck. Like that's in our like I have like we have our Nets group DM of like nerds, and um, because he's so he's really unathletic and slow, so like. All like bully ball shit that he does in summer league and he did at Kansas doesn't translate. But he's a very good rebounder and his defense is fine. So if he could shoot, like he's a rotation player, but like who cares? Are <laughs> you do we think that they trade um Claxton at the deadline? No, definitely not this deadline. Maybe eventually. And I'm sure if they got like a stupid offer, sure. But I don't think they because it descends anyway, so it gets more of that like after this, it's bloated. It's so like this year he gets a ton, but then like, it go, go, I think it's down four straight years, so it's only going to go up in trade value. But um, and if by some miracle, like, because like Claxton and Clowney, like in theory, is a very good defensive joke. Like if by some miracle they're like 14th in defense, like on Christmas, like they'll just shut Claxton down with like a fake injury. <laughs> like they'll yeah. do the crusty shit. <laughs> They have no shame. They just fucking signed Killian Hayes. They, they made it very clear what the plan is. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here? I think that was it. Um, let's get Demetrius Skavitsev on a two-way, please. Expeditiously announce it. Please. The Knicks aren't going to do shit until like August, yeah. man. You can. Um, do you guys? Think oh, they're going to yeah. trade for a second. I think they are very open to that but i also think that that it's more likely they pay precious a number that yeah. makes him advantageous do, like, as do like the akogi kj martin shit 
Yeah, I think they'll give. I think they'll give but, Precious a number because I don't think they'll be able to get a center and trade that they actually want. And then they still have the room exception. I'm positive they're going to sign somebody for, for that, if only to use them as trade fodder. Who, um, who who would they who would they look at for that? Good pal, good pal of the program, Reggie Bullock is still a free agent. Oh God, that would be isn't the room exception so tipsy? How much is the room exception? Five point two. Okay, so that's like tax MLE. I don't know. Yeah, so so they can basically get to like between pressures. They have like thirteen point two million Should under sign the second Lonnie Walker. Point. Make him the boats replacement. I would love that. I would love. Yeah, to Lonnie, that. Lonnie's good. Like, well, yeah. he's he can. Well, I think he, he wants a hot. multi-year deal, and no one is giving him mm. one. That's probably yeah. what's happening. But like he, so they have thirteen point two million under the, the second apron. They're going to get thirteen point two million dollars signed somehow. Um, and then I think that they will look to trade that. But my feeling is they're very open to multiple things. I still feel like there's something there with the cat stuff. We'll see if anything comes of that. Should sign, um, should sign Biombo. Is every, year Biombo, every year Biombo gets picked up off the street, and every year I'm like, he's kind of he's fine. Like, he's like a fine gas in the player. tank. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think yeah, because I think he finished this season on the OKC. Yeah, he did, but didn't play. And well, yeah. they had a weird, he had a weird thing happen where he like collapsed on the sideline during a game or something. Yeah, yeah, that happened. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. So that. I wonder if that was just like he was like, um, eh, maybe don't play me the rest of the year, guys. I will say the Knicks did hire an assistant coach named Mark Bryant yesterday, who is I didn't know him prior to this tweet, but pro- uh, he is known as like a big man's coach. Like he is a well-renowned big man developer. He worked with Aiden for a while. He worked with Serge Ibaka for a while. Uh, I know he works. He's like been around the whole league. The Knicks, but, the Knicks are pretty good with their bigs. Yeah, so uh, yeah. whatever they want to so, do with the bigs, I'm, I'm happy with. If we believe that we can turn Jericho Sims into an NBA player in no, year four, that's the that's the one thing oh, that yeah that they cannot do. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> anybody can do that. I I always say I feel like Sims plays basketball like he learned what basketball was like that week. Yeah, <laughs> because he really is like one of the best athletes of his size. I oh, it's insane. Crazy. It's insane. Yeah. So he's such a freak. And, but, he's, in, but, yeah. but he's just, he's like comically bad at basketball. Yeah. It's really just, wild. You, I, the, <laughs> other th- the other thing too is Tibbs always has, he's him, so like, bozo. you know, Tibbs is like, Oh, you got to fucking drop at the, like, you got to be at the level. Just fucking tell him to switch, dude. Like he's not going to get anything else. He, none of that other shit. He's like, he has no clue what's going on. Um, Yeah, definitely not an NBA player, but that's what I think. I think, I do. I I really feel like I feel like Nick Richard, Nick Richards will end up on the Knicks at some point this Nick, season. Nick Nick Adams Richards, all yes, time Nick Bill Adams. Simmons, <laughs> he would be so obvious because he's like such a West guy, and like he's so obvious with like the Kentucky thing. And like there was that article about the Knicks like, I, banging the table for him in the draft that year. I just I kind of think he's like, and it like makes sense, and he's gettable for cheap. So I, I just fine. think he's he's the exact type of big man who like Tibbs would get a ton out of. Yeah. And then, but it's like actually not that good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he's interesting. His salary makes sense. All he hasn't, he doesn't have the Darko nerds yet. You know, Hartenstein no, was the Darko he, nerd favorite. No, but he, he has what Richards has is he's got the B ball index guys. He's got some good B ball index stats. Um, the rim protection is good. So he shot 70% or something like that at the rim last year. What was his, what was his dunks and threes uh, EPM? Uh, I out. can tell you right I'll, now. I'll look at, I'll bet, I bet I'll beat you to it because you type fucking really slow. Hold on, ready? Hold on. Let's see. It's it was, oh, good. it was, uh, he was a minus two EPM, but a minus 1.4 in defense. No, but that was like 20 percentile. So he, he stinks. I was going to say, that's I, quite I, bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's that's bad. like it's not bad. NBA level. Yeah, it's bad. Like, <laughs> yeah that's pretty bad. His, uh, his, 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 oh, all right, here's the thing. His O rebounding was 89th percentile his defensive rebounding was 91st percentile so yeah, the here's the thing though with with the with the hornets you can't take any of these nerd stats too seriously with them because like yeah, this is the like they yeah. they were just terrible last year everything sucked but yeah his true shooting is great his effective field goal percentage is great he's good at the rim he'd only take shots at the rim basically that's like yeah. all he does that's very much he's he just fits the like tibbs tibbs like this yeah. is what we want our bigs to do thing very well there is a Hornets it's pod, there's some theoretical Hornets podcast out there saying those exact same things about Jericho Sims. You know, where we can trade Nick Richards <laughs> for Jericho Sims and two second rounders and you yeah. know look at their look at their TS and shooting at their in percentage. They're both Tibbs, 75%. Tibbs doesn't understand this guy. He doesn't understand how to use him. Uh, um, he'd be a, I'm sure just all idiots. He has to commit a crime and then he's a perfect fit. 
<laughs> They've certainly had an adventure with their team. Uh, good luck to them this season. Hopefully nobody commits a crime. That would be a start for them. Uh, LaMelo, please get a driver. That would be a good they've, idea. They've got, they've got our guy, Kemba Walker, on the bench. I know. When... Wait, is he really? Yeah, he's a bench coach for them. He's like a he's like a player dev guy now for them. That's hilarious. <laughs> when the Nets were when the Nets were in piss and shit, I wanted them to try for Lamelo Ball. I was like, they need to take a upside swing. I was like, get him into a walkable community. Don't let him own a car. <laughs> he'll be fully he'll be fully unlocked, baby. You know, you can walk to practice from his apartment, walk to the game. You know, no cars needed here. Yeah. All right. I think it's a good place to end it. Will, let the people know where they can find you and uh, plug anything that you'd like to plug. Uh, you know, I just push agendas on Twitter. You know, like I just do, <laughs> I just do, I just do data bitch work for a medical equipment company. You know, I don't do basketball. Uh, my, my Twitter is moderately amusing. It's uh, Will Hater. My profile picture is Ed Davis. That, that's that's who Tibbs needs. He needs 20 Nick's legend. Nick's legend. Nick's legend. Nick's legend. Ed Davis. Yep, that's true. But, uh, but yeah, I agree. Thank you for having me on. But I don't really have anything to plug, So, Awesome. I'm Thanks good. for coming on, Will. Appreciate your time. Uh, Zach, anything? Um, I'm going to use your line and say all the great work of the Strickland, but specifically my – no, I'm kidding. Um, all the article images of the Strickland and the great articles that follow them and all the other stuff that's coming out, it's kind of going to get – it's going to get quiet for the next few months, so we're going to come up with some really creative content for you guys because there's nothing to really cover. So stay tuned because we've got some some really bored ideas that are that are coming that are coming. Awesome, that's the real sell right there. Uh, I have nothing personally to plug. So as Zach said, check out all the work at Strickland. That is wonderful. Uh, Max Hoover just wrote a really good article yep. today uh, about Julius Randall, where he actually went back and watched all his threes. Shout out to him. That's uh, so. Yeah. I, like <laughs> every every time I look at the leaderboard for like most threes and like most, I'm like. Man, Randall is so high up there. Imagine if he, <laughs> he takes God, just shoot forty percent for me. Can you do something for me, Julius? Can you do something for Can me? Can you give me uh, one please. season, Julius? Julius, one season. just just give me one season of being a top five shooter in the NBA. It's all I'm asking <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah, Dante did it, man. You can do it. Come on. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's our show for today. I uh, hope everybody has a great week. Uh, we we'll, should be dropping a. Another pod sometime over the weekend so that we can get back on schedule. We'll see how the schedule goes. I don't know. It's the summer. Nobody cares. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your week and weekend, and I'll see you when I see you. Peace.